Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to Keeping Candles Mysterious. We are Lawful Stupid RPG and we're thrilled to have you join us while we play some of the Candle Keep Mysteries module with a few additions sprinkled in. My name is Buddy and I'm helming this adventure while our normal Saturday night game, Cold Hard Witch, is on hiatus. Let's see who we have here tonight, shall we? We have Ben playing Sledge, the Seder Chronergy Wizard. Z playing Raven, the Elf Mercy Monk. Panda playing Aerith, the Elf Psy Warrior Fighter. Grindy playing Gen, the Elf Soul Knife Rogue. And Pixie playing Narcissus, the Sorcerer Eloquence Bard. Uh, Riala's player is still feeling under the weather, so she will not be joining us tonight. Uh, how's everybody feeling? Let's see if I have the audio actually turned on now. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Is everybody ready to get onto this adventure tonight? So ready. So ready. <laughs> yeah. In the derail. <laughs> ready. Ooh. Ooh. Did you say derail for a reason? <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> oh. And welcome. <laughs> Last week, our party began by questioning their prisoner, one of the many assailants who were part of the attack on Candlekeep. Unable to get much from him, the group split up, with Aerith and Riala taking the prisoner for further questioning, and the remaining members continuing deeper into the city. They found another group of ne'er-do-wells making their way into a building and took them by surprise. Once the party breached the door, all that remained inside was a book called The Curious Tale of Wisteria Vale. They brought the book back to their meeting room and discussed the whole situation with their handler, Master Sage Tomris, and Sarah, the Harper agent who was in the process of hiring them. Sarah stared in disbelief at the party as they produced Harper agent badges that had come from the attackers. She gave them further information about Quill, the man who was trapped in the book, uh, information on how to rescue him, a crystal amethyst dagger to, to aid in his curing, and she also gave them information about a former agent named Soren, who seems to be behind this attack. The party was left to discuss matters and wait for Aerith and Riala to rejoin them so a decision could be made. And uh, at this point, we will say that, that uh, Aerith has made it back from the further questioning session with... Uh, the, uh, with the prisoner, and you may fill her in on uh, exactly what's going on. Well, as Aerith approaches, uh, Sledge has actually begun uh, a ritual, uh, the Find Familiar ritual. Um, so as you, as you come up, uh, you actually see Sledge is kind of pacing out what would be a, a circle, but he hasn't uh, written any runes down, and he kind of stops at a point and he starts doing jumping jacks. And he does that. And then he does a cartwheel to the other side uh, of the circle. And then he starts doing um, uh, burpees, you know, and he starts. Ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you see uh, as you coming. Uh, what Sledge is doing currently is he is uh, trying to summon, but it's very um, unique. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just walk into? Well, whew, some familiars require you to put in the effort. And then he does a cartwheel and he's over on the other side. And now he's running in place, whew, high kicking. This will take a minute. And uh, he continues to <laughs> summon his familiar. This is that the weirdest mating lost. dance. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I missed that. Sorry. Sledges as you last saw him. Still doing what he was doing. Well, that is the weirdest mating ritual I've ever seen, but continue. Um, uh, DM, did we get any information out of... Were we successful in our extraction of information? Uh, you two weren't actually doing the 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 deed you were just kind um, of just uh taking him you took you took him there and you you made sure that he didn't coax his way out of that um okay and, but but from from what you you know of that they said that there wasn't much that came out um okay so he he's pretty pretty well conditioned to to not break under torture 
Um, unfortunately, still not really talking, the man. But, um, I hope you guys have been up to anything else. Probably didn't help that I, uh, kind of brained him in the back of my blade before you took him. <laughs> True. But, uh, point to the, uh, the badges on, on the table. These, if you didn't already hear from our from the chat, are Harper badges. That's Sarah point to where, like, the door where she went to, whatever she is part of. And uh, as far as the red coins, we still haven't figured them out yet. But we did find the, uh, well, the defector named Soren, who also had about uh, four or five other people are still with him. One being a janitor. Right. Sledge does a cartwheel. He starts kind of doing like an imaginary bike ride. Uh, don't, don't forget to tell him about them going inside that book. <laughs> and <laughs> you can do You really need to learn how to do a better cartwheel. <laughs> oh, it's horrible. Legs aren't fully extended. You know, no, you're kind of Mon you're fuller. <laughs> Mon ami, you need to work on your stamina. <laughs> and then Narcissus will like slide up to Aerith and go, uh, did you perhaps happen to uh, get my manacles back? Uh, no reason at all. I'm just, uh, I would prefer not to be without them. You did. You did. I'll like take them out of my pocket, hand them to you. Um, it's a big pocket, by the way. Uh, I'll <laughs> hand them to you. Just say, I was kind of hoping you'd let me keep them, but here you are. Why well, do you carry those? And why do you want them? If you wish to use them, I'm happy to let you. And uh, why wouldn't I carry them with me? They're quite handy, as you saw. Hmm. Well, now that this conversation involves my sister, I'm removing myself from it. <laughs> Wise choice. <laughs> uh, any luck on finding the book itself? Right there, on the table. Oh, wow. <laughs> You've been busy. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the men, they all went into this building after casting this wall of force thing to keep us out, but, well, myself and Sledge, we know our way in, and um, they got themselves into the book. And, uh, we're not entirely sure how to activate the magic, but we know that the plane is in there, the demi-plane. So, we so wanted we want, to make sure... That we want in. Right. Exactly. We just don't know how to get in. Great. <sighs> Being Sledge, um, myself and Sledge may be able to use magic, but we are not too good at the books. That's why we are not part of the candle keep. Question. Mm -hmm. Living in candle keep, would we? Would I know of any? I, would I know of any practice of, of, of this ability of how to get in, how to do this? Um, you certainly have heard uh, different stories from some of the other adventurers about uh, different things that they did to activate a book to, to go into it. Um, I, I would say that it, why doesn't everyone roll just a general um, intelligence check for me? That is a 14. And that one. Oh, no. <laughs> You're just blocking out the conversation about hearing a sister in handcuffs like, ah, la, la, la. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Raven, what'd you get? Uh, I'm actually the same again. We're, we were both just off drinking some of that, that whiskey that we gotten from the other room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, rather than just let this go on, you... Uh, you all know that the thing that all of the, the the other stories that you've heard about how folks have gotten gotten in, the, the thing that they all absolutely have in common is that first you have to open the book and see what's inside it. Too obvious. <laughs> well, thanks for joining the stream, everyone. It's just going to be three hours of this. <laughs> of this. 
How does oh. one get into a book, children at school? <laughs> <laughs> the more you know. Sledge is honestly like, oh, that's what. That's what they... there's some guy down the hallway saying you mustn't read from the book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm actually gonna walk over to the book mm -hmm. and uh so the text you you said it earlier, could you repeat it again for me? What it what the book's it, called? Yes, it is called The Curious Tale of Wisteria Vale. It is a a, a leather bound uh book that uh I mean it's it's very nice looking. Um Shall we open the bad boy? Or are we uh, wanting to wait a little bit? Uh, I'm okay with opening it. Just give me a moment. Um, and uh, yeah, basically whenever, er, I think it's, uh, sorry guys, it's about an hour of workout session to get this <laughs> uh, get this familiar rocket and rolling here. Uh, we're we're going to let, uh, just because I like you running in place, we're going to let the that hour continue here a little bit. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Just, um, just a minute, hour guys. <laughs> One hour later. <laughs> One hour later. And now Sledge is, you know, reaching and jumping and touching his knees and dropping and <laughs> Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll say that that that, that concludes your 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 hour. Uh, the I, entire I mean, time Narcissus has been playing Benny Hill. <laughs> yeah, the accordion. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, it, it is technically an hour and 10 minutes, but but that's fine. No. We're, we're going to let you short that 10 minutes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because um, I'm your spotter. Remember, <laughs> the DM right here. The DM is your spotter. Remember right that. Here. How come you're always looking away when I'm on the heavyweights? Anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, at, at the end, uh, Sledge uh, sits in the, in the middle of what would be this circle, and he starts uh, doing crunches, the little uh, bi bicycle crunches, right? And he's like... <sighs> Ooh, ooh. And in the middle, um, arcane uh, light shows up, a ball, and it sort of, you know, poof, and out of this energy, you see, looking back at you over its shoulder, an owl. And as he turns around, this owl has an eight pack. And it is it is the most pristine normal size owl. Okay, it's not, you know, but it has an eight pack. And whew, Sledge is like, oh, well, you certainly took your time, Absraham. Oh man. Whew. Okay. Well, now that he's here, um, Absraham, stop showing off because now he is actually doing crunches uh, over by my shoulder. Um, Still has a strength of one, but you know that's cool. That's cool. I like to all think in his that, abs. I like to think Aerith, Raven, and Gen are like trading uh, coin over like bets of what they thought it was going to be, <laughs> like, and no one wins. Everyone's like, oh. <laughs> Gen would have tried to convince everyone to play cards with him. As oh, uh, cards. as your spell is coming to an end, and the the owl. Absraham uh, appears. We, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, as he appears, uh, you notice that uh, that both Master Sage Tomris and Sarah are standing in the door, just watching this uh, this virtual sideshow of of uh, of I don't even know what to call it. Go on. <laughs> So, have you figured out how to get into the demiplane yet? Well, we were about to do step one. Open the book. Master Sage Thomas turns and walks out of the room. And Sarah joins you all at the table. Uh, well, uh, yes, it, uh, the, it's, it's a play. Don't tell me we have to act it out. I mean, you didn't until you just said that. <laughs> dot dot dot. Uh, you, you you don't. Uh, but I, 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 this is a a fictionalized retelling of of Quill's rise and fall, and there are a number of parallels to to real events in his life. Um, but um, but but I don't I don't know how to activate it. But it must be within the text. So, oh. out of curiosity, because mm -hmm. I didn't ask this before, but 
the dagger. Yes, we know it has to be, you know, cut cut and or stab uh, Quill eventually. But uh, I, I just hold it over top of the book. We just not just pierce the book and then maybe it'll take care of everything that way. No, it actually has to it has to pierce his flesh. It uh, mm. uh, that's maybe we should have made it differently. And next time, if there is a next time, we will. But that uh, that's a, a good idea. Just unfortunately, not not one that works mm -hmm. this time. Yes, Aerith, we have uh, this amethyst dagger, which is supposed to hopefully cure him. By stabbing him with it. I said the same thing. I like this plan. It's it, it is. I don't think I said that part. But hey, <laughs> it is severe. Yes, but the uh, the the nature of the of the corruption to his mind from the from the artifact is is very special. So it is it is what the best of us could come up with. Um, so I think, uh, Sledge will walk up and, you know, kind of look around and, uh, well, uh, there's, there's one other, uh, ritual I would like to do before we go in, but this one, I promise it is not nearly as, uh, well, entertaining for you, I'm sure. Um, but, uh, this one, well, and I look at uh, Gen and Aerith and I go, you know how sometimes they creepily stare at each other and we don't know what's going on in their heads? Well, I can do that for everyone. And um, Sledge will first uh, walk up to uh, Narcissus and it looks like he's about to like headbutt her, but mere centimeters before getting to her forehead, he stops and inside your head, you hear, yeah, bro. And oh, she totally would have like docked out of the way. <laughs> she wouldn't. After that makehead session, no, she's just like, mm. oh, yeah, Sarah. That, oh, yeah. They uh, used they used make out uh, session. Here, I, I got conned into a make out session to it, like, it, try it was a avoid. distraction. That's what Sledge says. It no, works just, just doesn't say anything about it. She just, just <laughs> dipped. <laughs> Everyone was distracted until they ran away. Um, <laughs> I basically, after hearing Narcissus be like, not after that makeout session, Eric <laughs> looks to Gen, as described by Sledge, that creepy stare of them like talking to each other, and almost just facial expressions. I imagine them having the conversation of like, that face, and then like, and then <laughs> just like the expressions only of explaining like. <laughs> yes, like that, exactly. Now, and uh, one by one, he literally is going by, and it looks like he's going to headbutt to you. And last thing you hear is, what up, bro? And then we are all now connected telepathically uh, via telepathic bond. Very uh, nice. Hey, welcome to the sled show. Um, <laughs> in well, Raven so accidentally legit headbutts you. Oh, ah, go. <laughs> Do, uh, it, it, with, reaction. with telepathic bond, is it... <laughs> Does everyone hear everything, or does it all funnel through you like Gen's telepathy? It, it's I'm, like like we are right now, and like on the call here, everybody hears. Yeah. Okay. Can you? Uh, then is private it possible conversations. To is it possible to communicate one on one then, or does everyone? Uh, hear? You forge a uh, telepathic link with up to eight creatures. Let's see what we got here. Uh, linking all of them for the durations. Uh, do, 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 can communicate telepathically through the bond whether or not they have a common language. Um, it basically looks like an, an all-in-one call. Okay. Yep. And I, well, this, will, this won't get awkward at all. If I need to talk to just one person, then I'll just use my regular telepathy. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Um... So I guess the next question is, if we're going to open the book, um, who's going to open it? Uh, and every, everyone's probably looking at Sledge the wizard and he's, oh man. <laughs> uh, 
<sighs> oh, right. Um, I'll look around. Is everyone ready? Uh, Narcissus, you just hear her in her mind just go, Stop being such a little baby. And she steps forward and opens up the book. <laughs> and Ooh. in Sledge's mind, you hear, Whoa! Sh- <laughs> I need everyone to roll. Save versus damn it took you half an hour to open a book. Um <laughs> so yeah, is, you... that, is that intelligence or is that, uh... <laughs> what it, is this? It's an automatic fail. Um, Our roll is another 14 more minutes of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, so you, you open it and just like any book that any of you have ever seen, it uh it opens a, is a you know nice hand done title page and uh it definitely seems to be a play in three acts. All right. Time to start acting this bad play out. <laughs> so, so, okay. So who wants to, to kind of read through everything? I imagine Nos- I mean, Nos has opened it. Um, yeah, I, I would probably curious. skip towards the back. Just being like, well, it has to happen mm. like sometime when he gets like, we'll have to find out when he gets like put into the book what the phrase was so like that's probably going to be near the back of the just book skip um, to the climax of the story where <laughs> there's the good stuff as she doesn't like books so it's conference. just like just get to the get to the exciting bit already unless it's smut she's not into it you know it, it is it's unfortunately not smut exactly so she's just <laughs> skipping forward what is like, the book not worth my time <laughs> there's no um, music or smut in here what am where I? are the pictures <laughs> yeah other picture <laughs> uh speaking of as she's flipping through um quickly uh sledge is actually kind of looking at the middle and on the uh the gaps to see if there's any uh handwritten notes or any other markings you know that Ooh. aren't part of the printed well like he is actually bookmark. looking for stick figures you know like he... <laughs> yeah so if, if you're gonna do that sledge give me a uh an investigation check please and uh Narcissus, why don't you give me one as well? Ooh, so that's a 17 from Sledge. And um a... um wait, 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 wait. I'm pretty sure I still have my inspiration from last week. My D20. I'm gonna use that now. <laughs> <laughs> don't good. be showing up before by the you, before Probably you call a good. That, is that acceptable? <laughs> probably a good call. Absolutely, absolutely. You should have looked for the stick figures. Oh. Uh, it's not much better. It's, it's only not enough. a whole lot better, but <laughs> you you try and read through, and but you can just hear Aerith's thoughts about the handcuffs, and it's kind of distracting. <laughs> it's very distracting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and that and Sledge going, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. <laughs> I, I like to think that uh, that you overhear in your mind, Gen and Aerith, he's like, what? why do you want to borrow the handcuffs? Don't worry about why I want to borrow the handcuffs. Just <laughs> tell, me, don't, don't worry about it. tell me why you want to borrow handcuffs. Um, so, uh, cool. S- Sledge, with, with, that, uh, with that very good role, you, you don't notice any... Any hidden stuff on um, hidden writing or anything like that along the the outside the bindings, but you do notice that as Narcissus is just wildly, wildly flopping around and and looking at the different pages. Um, you do notice that on the 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 last page of the book, uh, there's a a monologue there, and one of the lines is underlined twice, and. Uh, Sending it to you in Zoom, Sledge. Um. So right as Narcissus is getting like to the end, like where where's the climax? And Sledge says, you know, some climaxes take time. Okay, and um, you get to the end, and I, I imagine you're about to like like ah, and Sledge kind of throws his finger right in the middle of the bu- the binding of the book and is like, oh, wait, wait. And kind of like rolls it open. Hmm. We lift, I like that, up our light to reveal what is hidden and banish the darkness forever. You see that? Uh, and I pointed out to Narcissus the double underlined. Uh, we lift up our light and banish the darkness forever? Is yeah 
Um, out of everything in there, it's the only one that had any markings other than what was printed in the book. Does anyone have the spell? We lift up light? our light to reveal what is hidden and banish the darkness forever. That's not what you said, Sledge. You, you missed some words when you said it out. Oh, well, I got stuck on the lifting part. Um, uh, and uh, kind of looking over to um, Raven uh, Sledge's, do any of these words strike anything? I, I know you had said you were semi-familiar with, with uh, that Harper organization. I know a thing or two about them, yes. Um, I mean, you see, and I point at one of the badges, uh, you have the, the iconic harp that they, they love, and then there is the crested moon. So, and yes, there's the four, four cardinal points for the stars, but that is besides the point. So, if I had to guess, if it had to go something with them, it might have to do with the moon, but then again, there might be a, a, a trick here because, you know, why make it that easy? Nice, this is just mutters under her breath the line twice, just in case that was it, given mm. that it was underlined twice. She was like, mm. right, I'll just say it twice, just in case that's it. Uh, it is not, but that is it is excellent d deduction. Uh, is, and Sarah is still uh, here? The uh, Yes, preferred? she is. Um, does this, uh, given your history with Soren and, and this other uh, individual, does this mean anything uh, to you? Um, and kind of let her in on this. She she reads it a, a couple of times over. Uh, no, it, it there's nothing that I can think of that 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 calls to. We we were told that he was being put into the prison, but there were supposedly only a couple of people who actually knew how to get in to to, to keep this a place of protection um i'm afraid that 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 the that phrase doesn't really mean anything to me it couldn't be as simple as light could it like and can gen just try the obvious thing light up a torch and shine yeah it over yeah as yeah as soon as I'm, I'm thinking that in my head i'm like it couldn't be as simple as light and gen is like pushing it out <laughs> Yeah, Aerith was like, "Does anyone cast light here? Does anyone so, have that spell?" So, do you do you light a torch? Yeah, you light a torch and it, you shine it directly on the page, and in very lightly, in what seems like some sort of invisible ink, is the phrase "Harper's at Twilight." Hmm. Alpha's at twilight? And when you what say is... that, the book <laughs> trembles a little bit and and just kind of shoots out from, from your hand. And in what seems like just a whirlwind that should be making a ton of noise, but is absolutely silent, the pages one by one seem to tear away from the binding and and kind of circle around. And on their own accord, they rearrange themselves to form... A portal with just a little shimmering curtain of uh, of energy. And you have all been through enough portals to know that this sure seems like some sort of uh, some sort of teleport type type situation. Ah, good job, Gin. Allons-y, mon ami. And notice this will walk through. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, well, um... come on, Abzerham. Again, well done. And uh, Sledge and Abzerham will <laughs> walk towards the portal. Okay. Well, one day's work, I suppose. Then he just uh, extinguishes the torch if he can and walks through. But before he steps through, he'll turn toward Aerith. You coming? Mm hmm. And she will walk through with her brother. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget to let Riala know how to get in here. Sarah shakes her head. Yes, I will. I will. I will tell her the the secret to the entrance. We will 
I'll, I'll be here. We'll maintain guard outside. Um, re remember, Soren knows that you're coming. He knew how to get into the book. You've got to deal with him before you deal with Quill. A Quill can only leave the demiplane by being killed or by being cured. Soren knows everything that I do and more. So he's he's waiting for you. He's setting a trap right now. Be careful. <laughs> Sounds like it'd be interesting then. Godspeed. Yep. Yeah, just taking a little drink off off the counter because they had brought us in some drinks and food. <laughs> Take it in. <laughs> Alrighty. You are uh very pleasantly uh and and silently whisked away. We're gonna change maps here to uh whisk to wherever this goes. Uh we're on the bottom center of this map is where the reveal spot is. You guys zip through and you are in a kind of the outskirts of a little village. There's a you know some birds in the sky, there's there's trees around, you're on a a road a, a kind of a makeshift road um and you can see you know, a little bit up ahead there's a a fork in the road but uh it is it's very peaceful here no not a trace of of candle keep in sight uh so you as you all can assume that you are within the demi plane is there um as far as the the scenery uh, itself, um, does it remind us of any like particular locale? So like a, a mountain village, a desert village. Uh, is there any kind of? Um... I mean, it, it certainly has that vibe. And if any of you have spent any time around Baldur's Gate, it seems to be kind of like one of the small cities around Baldur's Gate, and that. That tracks with the knowledge that you have that Wisteria Vale was a town outside of Baldur's Gate that has been destroyed for at least the last decade. Uh, but that is certainly the vibe that that you get. Um, I think th uh, through the telepathic bond. Um, well, this was not exactly what I was was thinking. This is this is more like a summer vacation spot. Um, what? I mean, did we have any direction on where he would be in this plane? <laughs> I imagine somewhere where he felt safe. If I take guess. Either that or somewhere that he could plan his world domination. I know that if I was stuck in a place like this with some evil intent, I would probably make myself some sort of fortress or something. I don't know. Should we just sort of waltz into town or should we stay on the outskirts and have those better equipped at sneaking around check it out first? <clears throat> Uh, again, turns and looks at Raven. I think he means us. <laughs> well, this high grass and trees is quite easily hidden in. At least for me, it is. I've got a lot of bulk to hide, you know, so it's... <laughs> yes, obviously you mean the owl. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do you have control of, of the owl? I put it on the uh, screen for you. Let me double check. Does anyone really control their pets? <laughs> uh, I really I wanted do you not. to use. I really wanted you to use do the one not. that I sent in the chat of just the really muscular mm -hmm. owl. <laughs> mm -hmm. Controlled by. Uh, get his character sheet open. I mean, if you want, I'll, I'll quickly convert it to a token. <laughs> and. So everyone just he should be able to control him if, if this doesn't work then i will uh i'll just run him for you and i'll fix it on yes. the break um 
a little to the left. No, mm. the other left. Oh. We'll fix it in post. Don't we'll, worry. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> Just edit all of this out. Suddenly he's slurred and, and Al gets deleted. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, all right, I'll, I'll, I will control him for you for now. I think it's because I have him linked to a character sheet. Not a problem. Everyone know Abs or Ham is here. It's fine. Oh, it okay. can be edited and controlled by... Save changes. Try that. I have the power. Yes, we are good. Uh, all right, so what are you guys going to do? Now I'm for sneaking around through the outskirts of the woods. To, and uh, by the way, Aerith, if you didn't hear this already, um, because, and if he's not telling you as I, as I just glance over towards her brother, uh, we will be getting the benefits of more payment, uh, successfully dispatching of Soren, both from being paid via the Grandmaster and uh, Sarah. This is a heads up. More money for us all. So, uh, who is it that we're saving from here? Just to make sure I'm aware. Possibly nobody. <laughs> Great, that's how I like it. Perfect, let's go. <laughs> There's a man named Quill, and he is the one who had the things that made him a little bit cursed, and uh, he's the one you have to stab. We're the one we have to stab with that knife. Yeah, so Everyone he's the one we have to stab with the knife. The other Everyone one, Saul. Everyone else, Sauron. fair game. Yeah, yeah. Saul, and he is a very naughty boy, and we need to kill him, <laughs> and everybody will give us more money if we manage to kill him, because he's such a naughty boy. Yes, the, the gentleman we were sent in to come get, they would preferably like him alive because he's supposed to have some use. Well, everyone roll a... I guess we'll call it a history from just a few minutes ago. <laughs> or just just a, like I was, I was an hour I ago. Recall, I recall... Let's see what I recall. Not much. <laughs> I rolled a Kraken. Well, no, Where's where that now? <laughs> do... Uh, Well, we'll see if 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 Raven rolled a, a Kraken, then you remember that what she said was you get paid if he comes back alive. Yep. I know how but I know how everybody else in the group feels and like would rather just fully dispatch um, of. Is for it sure, fully sure. alive or mostly? alive or mostly not is all the, the way man, dead is the man we stab with the amethyst who is meant to come back alive after we stab him because we're meant to stab him before we bring him back alive but it is the other ones that we are getting paid to kill correct yeah so you basically you have two separate jobs oh uh, yes so they both involve stabbing so i'm happy <laughs> Murder Hobos Incorporated, everyone. Murder Hobos Incorporated. <laughs> oh, um, did we just find our group name? No. <laughs> uh, as uh, we're sort of discussing this, I'm going to um, ask Abzerham, because you don't tell Abzerham, okay? You ask Abzerham. Um, and uh, to kind of fly forward a little bit and kind of perch up in one of these trees to kind of take a look around. Sure. Um... Yeah, it um, it's very much just kind of that that same, very calm, you know, bucolic setting. And it's two ones in a row. I've rolled with that one. We're gonna change dice. Um, the dice jail, you go. <laughs> So uh, as we're sort of discussing, uh, Sledge is sort of sending him forward and we're laying back uh, to the group. So far, Abzerham is just uh, flexing on some branches. Uh, nothing else so far. Um, and it's sort of taking a few steps tentatively forward. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, are we going? And he uh, does the over-the-shoulder look. Hey. Does it change much, from your uh, sauna uh, 
you know, how, bathroom. How much, how much eyesight does the owl have? Does he have 100 feet? Let me double check on that. I have it on my D&D Beyond. Mm-hmm. He has... 120 dark vision. 120. So uh, I, I will say that it is, it is not dark here. I just, for uh, purposes of narrative, I do like to to thin it out just a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but if he if you're owed 120, it'd be more like that. So he actually sees um, a person uh, up a ways a bit standing uh presumably talking to someone uh it's hard to quite tell the the person's about 120 130 feet away from him um okay uh yeah i will uh stop right there and uh through the telepathic bond well it appears that there's someone else here in this pocket dimension oh about a hundred uh hundred or so feet up ahead here the uh suddenly just kind of out of nowhere the the sky just turns a dark inky black and uh thunderclouds roll in just out of nowhere like you hadn't been seeing the move they suddenly they're just they're just on top of everything and you see lightning flashing in the distance and you hear kind of the low rumble of thunder uh but currently there is no rain i didn't do that uh (laughs) (laughs) oh best answer ever uh have you ever really made it rain (laughs) You see, you see Sledge's shoulders slump slightly. Are we going or not? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. And I think I will move Absarham over to this tree. Yes. Okay. I'll follow closely uh, next to Sledge since he's technically our eyes with the, with a Abraham. <laughs> I'd like to move up there too, stealthily if I can. Well, not yet. When we get closer. Yeah. I'm sneaking through the uh, the high grass. Like a Pokemon. <laughs> I'd love to say Sledge is being awesome, but he's like on the middle of the path, just walking up like, hey, Abraham is over there. Um So yeah, the as long as you're within the the communication distance, which I think you are of hundred feet. Um uh-huh. Oh, actually you're out of range of him to tele- telepathy that to you. So I should not have revealed anything. Are these oh, these are fives or tens? Uh, these are fives. Originally, this map, if you notice that there's a bunch of little squares inside, this map it comes from the factory as one square is 40 feet. And that's why this map is so heinous for you guys to load, is because I had to expand the size to make it five foot squares. Because 40 foot squares don't work in this game what people don't have more than 40 plus speed oh well okay yes the the monk can move one square every turn um so uh well in that case i mean obviously uh i think i'd probably make it to the the crossroads here mm-hmm. uh and uh so he, of, yeah he oh, can ahead. he can come back to you you can have a like, standing thing like go out and see what you see and then come back to get into my 100 foot range or you, you're only like 20 feet out of range with him, so you can just move up 20 feet and gotcha. you'll be back into telepathy range with him. Got you. Um, before moving forward, I will uh, let the... Um, oh, actually, I guess I have to to reveal. So, yes, I will get to this clump of trees here mm-hmm. um, and then relay that I see what looks like two people talking. Um by this first building to the north here. Um, yes. And at that point, I think I'm going to actually kind of hold up in these little clump of trees. OK. 
Okay. What's everybody else doing? I seem to see Raven starting to slink out to the side a little bit. The slinkage. I'm sticking with a sledge, so I'll be moving up with him. Narcissus right. is just following behind Aerith. You know what? I will move up to, to try and scout. I guess I'll cross this road because there's no not really any other option, but I too will try and hide it in the grass. Yeah, I mean the 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 road is it it's just kind of like packed dirt. It uh it, it certainly is not that of like a major city. Uh it looks as though the village has been here for, for some time, but it is not it's not fancy. Hmm. I'm just sneaking my way through through the high grass around sneaking my way. Oh sneaking my way. Yeah, it the grass isn't actually all that high, but uh but that's I, I, no you're not really I'm in kinda, range of anyone to notice you yet, so Yeah, I'm just kinda guessing uh, it, whether it's high grass or whatever, because you know, being a, a wood elf, it's a little bit easier to uh hide out in nature. True, true. Um so let's see how far. Five, ten. Okay. Um, so I'm actually going to uh, walk up here, having having an idea. Um, kind of walk on the other side here, and I will put my hand on Gen's shoulder. Uh, one moment, and you'll see Sledge's eyes um, kind of roll back, and all of a sudden his abs become like a 16 pack because I'm now channeling through abs or ham. Um, okay. And I'm going to just uh, fly him over here and look through um, his eyes and senses uh, as I get closer over here. Okay. As, uh, as you begin that process and you, you touch Gin's shoulder and you transfer your sight to, uh, to abs or ham, the, <clears throat> the dark, storm clouds and the lightning and the thunder that had rolled up on you all just kind of evaporates. It is, it is no longer there. Um, Aerith, you realize though that the tree that's right in front of you suddenly has no color to it. It just all the green from the leaves, all the brown from the trunk, the, the little bit of moss that was on it, it, it just drained of color. It's still there. But it just looks like a like almost like a pencil sketch. Is this? I don't think I've seen anything like this before. You can, uh, can, you, I, can you can roll a a history or an arcana. Yeah, can either. I can I can I roll a what am I better at? Let's see. Can I roll history? Yeah, that's probably better. Sure, sure. Um, that is twenty two. Yes. You you've heard stories that uh, from from madmen about um you know, things that were not, that were colored that then became not, or things that were not colored that became brightly colored. Uh, but, but you, you, those are things that you hear from Mad Men. It's not a, oh, this causes that. So you, you certainly have heard of this, but you don't really have an attribution for it yet. Okay. I will relay that information through the telepathy of the, of the group. Um, it does it just just for my head. Does it look like it's becoming a drawing? Like, does it look like it's becoming uh, like like a sketch rather than real life? It you wouldn't necessarily know unless you reached out to touch it. But it it just looks like that it's an empty vessel of what it once was. Maybe that's a better way to put it. So it's less of it's becoming a sketch and more that. The if, life is almost draining from it. Yes, uh, but but not but not in like a decayed kind of way. In a yeah, suddenly the color. just yeah, clear clear white ish kind of way. Guys, we just need to wait here about ten minutes. It just needs to load in. <laughs> 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 Buffering. Just wait a minute. I believe this is called the fog of war or something, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard some sort of spell called horrendo distance as well. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, so getting back to sledge, let me um, get my measuring tape back out and see. Give you a little more on the reveal here. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, and so the you you land up there, and it it for sure is two folks uh, below just just chatting. They're, they're talking about they're talking about how strange it was that clouds uh, just rolled in and then rolled out, and, and oh well, have you have you, have you seen that we have a have a new merchant coming in at the uh, to 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 sell? Oh, I saw it. it's 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 a big day having a merchant come through. It's just very mundane kind of chatter. Um, to the group, I'll be like, apparently there's a new merchant coming to town. Uh, their conversation is, well, pretty normal. Um, and uh, in doing that, I'll kind of uh, let the group know... Um, you know, if, if we want to, um, I can keep having Abzerham kind of scout out ahead if we want to stay on the outskirts, or uh, do we just want to walk in? Um, what I've seen so far is two normal folks talking. I will say, Narcissus is very confused when Sledge says normal because his Ouch. version of normal or like... <laughs> Well, good point. Um, let's call this a Thursday night, not a Saturday night. Normal, so normal. <laughs> the uh, you 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 can you hear and 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 see if you're still using Abzerham's senses. Um, the uh, the person on the south side here uh, clocks that he's up there. He's like, oh my, look. What a beautiful and strangely muscular looking owl. It's 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 beautiful, but that's frightening. I've never seen anything like that. It, and so they switch to momentarily just puzzling about this beautifully chiseled yet somewhat grotesque owl. <laughs> There's a slight who, like who always seems to be looking over his shoulder no matter way. which way he's facing. Always, he, he'll move his feet to get the the over the shoulder uh, look. Um, so yeah, I, I will uh, the whole time again uh, as they're talking. Um, Sledge is sort of repeating what they're saying. Oh, well, now they're admiring me or my abs, at least. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that is what I see, guys. The uh, as he tells you that the uh, Aerith the the color slowly resumes in that tree and it looks just as normal as it did when you first got here. Raven, what you doing, Slinkums? Sneak, sneak, sneak. Sneak, sneak, sneak. sneak. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, roll a stealth for me because you're starting to get, with them noticing that there's an owl and you're starting to get a little closer. Just want to see, see what you're looking like in the stealth. All right, uh, 26. Yeah, yeah, you fine. You all right. I'm on the 13. <laughs> uh, Not nearly as crazy as uh, Gen. Can I try sneaking up there too? Sure. Let's see, so one of the, one of these squares is five feet, right? All right. Yeah. 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 All right. Um. Okay. Seven. Yeah, you uh, you smooth up there as well, and uh, they're they are just bamboozled by this owl. They, that's probably why you're all sneaking around so well, because they're just straight looking up at him, and he's looking over his shoulder at them and flexing the whole time. Uh, Narcissus. Uh, she's. She finds this whole tree thing very strange mm -hmm. and is kind of thinking that maybe the further apart we are, the more the plane, more of the plane has to exist at a time, hmm. which is what's causing it. But okay. she also doesn't know how to put that into words because it's just like this weird thing of just seems like the further apart we are, the harder it is. And she's also just like, eh, that, that seems normal as well. Um, do, you, do you try to explain that a little bit at all to, to Aerith sitting next to you? 
a little bit, but also just probably stumbling over her words and every like third word in her brain is probably like mm-hmm. uh, thinking something along the lines of she wanted to use the manacles or uh, yeah, I can't keep walking behind her. It's too distracting. You know, something along those lines. And she's just like, she's, right. she's saying out loud these actual words and these are like the thoughts that are going on in her head, not remembering the, about the whole telepathic thing. I'm just going, yes, I believe this tree it is very confusing oh my god please stop looking at our butt it's too good <laughs> um i think that perhaps it is uh, there are more of us in here now god she really needed to bar what did you want to borrow those handcuffs for <laughs> and uh, uh. making it much harder for the planes the magic to Keep uh-huh. us all believing. Yeah, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, uh, she kind of just like red in the face. Um, and you just hear zoot, 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 meld. <laughs> just like swearing, just beating in her head, just going like, oh, fuck you, absolutely. <laughs> this up. Um, so as this is transpiring, everyone except Sledge, since you're using the, uh, the senses of Absraham, you all just, there's this striking sudden unmistakable scent of of seaweed and and salt air uh, as though you were you were on a beach or or at the docks uh, that is just strongly in the air uh all all around you um hey guys narcissus had a great idea about potentially us having to stick together not stray too far away it seems the further away we get the less this place feels kind of real it's worth a try um <clears throat> i will <laughs> <laughs> um uh, i will mm-hmm. let go of the um the site uh Mm -hmm. and upon doing so i kind of stumble a little bit because gen was so stealthy he actually moved from (laughs) from from under under your hand (laughs) under my hand holding his shoulder and now i'm like gen oh um so uh, as soon as you come back you also are just are hit with the the scent of of fresh salt air and and seaweed and it's just as though you're on the open water. You're you're as, when you're back into your body, you're suddenly hit with that scent. Um, whew. did anyone else notice the uh, the sea air? Um, and that's an excellent point, uh, Narcissus and Aerith. Uh, how close? Uh, when that storm arrived, how far apart were we? About a hundred feet or so. Are you, asking, are you asking me or them? Uh, them. <laughs> okay. Through, through, through the bone. We were, we were all pretty close. I would say that within 30 feet of each other at most. The only thing that was out further was, was your owl. And even that was maybe 40 feet in front of us at the time frame. Well, I suppose it is worth a, worth a try. Uh, even if, even if the uh, uh, Gen and Raven want to stay sort of on the outskirts, if we kind of go up this trail um kind of relatively close together do you think we'll be okay there uh narcissus i i don't know for sure it is just it's what this tree did is really what got me thinking about it hmm. i don't know that sledge knows about the tree i think he was already using the owl's sight and sound <laughs> Sledge is looking at the tree, and it's, of course, fully, you know, a tree uh, colored in and all that. And he's like, it, uh, well, they grow. Um, uh, What did it do? Lost its, it lost its color. As if it was almost losing its I don't know. There's stories from madmen about these sort of things happening. It uh, lost it, but then it came back. Um, 
DM in any of the wizard workout monthly uh, magazines that mm-hmm. uh, Sledge gets. Um, of course, of course. And that you're a cover of. <laughs> thank you. I didn't want to name drop myself, but I like uh, to yes. think you, you uh, cut out pictures of yourself and stick them on the front uh, in like oh. the shops. So mm-hmm. it's like. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, so in all my perusing of wizard workout monthly, um, would it be possible that I had any uh, knowledge of of something like this happening or speaking to what Narcissus is talking about as far as planes and... Uh, roll an Arcana check, please. Can I offer advantage on that? Sure. Please. All right. Uh, um, he'll, he'll shift when you click it at a roll advantage. Yeah, I uh, definitely. Um, well, I did it in D and D Beyond. Uh, Twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Is yours not passing over? Okay, so when I do advantage in D and D Beyond, for some reason it doesn't go to roll twenty. Um, I don't know what the sitch is there, but I can roll it both. Um, like, boom, and boom. There we go. Um. So. With a 22, you know that, um... Granny had a 26 on D&D Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, for sure. So, the you know the, that planar magic, uh, which is, is certainly what is, is what is used to create a demiplane, planar magic can get uh, very strange if there are powerful magical influences within it. Um, there are some creatures who um who are, are innately uh like tied to planes or unable to to manipulate planes and they they themselves can also create weirdness within demi planes as well okay um through the telepathic bond uh i'm going to relay i distinctly remember in uh the december issue Wizards work out monthly. Uh, there was an entire article on how to lift a plane. It's all in the back. But one of the uh, article or one of the points of the article was that uh, strange things can happen and that uh, certain people can affect these planes in, in different ways if they're tied to it. Um, I think you're on to something, Narcissus. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so I think we should just move forward. What you know, these people are just talking about how amazing Absraham is. Was that article besides the one on uh, how to actually please your lover? Uh, no, I missed that. Well, wait well how to lift up everybody's <laughs> expectations of you because that is so low. It's butterfly squat thrust. That's how you do it. Um, <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, I think at, at this point, um, Sledge will, will heed the advice of Narciss and stay close. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll probably uh, kind of go back on the trail. Um, like, well, we should, uh, we should at least introduce, uh, my magnificent, I mean, all of us, uh, to, to these beautiful people up here. And would you like me to test this theory? And I can just take a run due east for about a uh, half a minute. <laughs> In six seconds, the plane collapses. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that's actually not a bad idea. Um, Raven, let's let's uh, let's give this a test and sort of a fake uh, or a, a arcane stopwatch uh, sort of materializes. I'm like, I'm gonna be. Uh, let's work on your suicides. Um, Already I'll, gone. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, I didn't even hit the. Oh. As a so just to, just as he, so you're just gonna you're just gonna go head to the east for thirty seconds for five yeah, five six yeah seconds. thirty seconds roughly like running. It's, it's gonna be a lot of distance I can cover. Yeah, and so I'm not going to do map reveal, but what I will do is I'll reveal map up to the forest and then tell you that you are just in um, forest for uh, 
for basically, you know, uh, all of that except for this first, uh, uh, you know, uh, what, 60 feet? But you, uh, you enter the forest and it is, it's, it's dense, but easily passed. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so just as he, sorry, just as she breaks, uh, and, and takes off running that way, um, the, the, the rest of you who are still on the path, just, you hear just galloping horses, just galloping galloping driving it, it god it must be 50 horses running as hard out as you've ever heard a horse run and it's just gallop 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 it, the sound is just constant um uh raven do you hear those charging horses i say through the telepathic bond um, you hear them, but they are, they're definitely, they seem further away to you. Okay. Are these Wait. like the cavalry that you had, uh, thought was coming earlier? Uh, you took care of that problem. <laughs> uh, is the question, did we hear it because you went far away? Well, come closer now. Let's, uh, let's see if the, the hoof sound goes away. <laughs> Yeah, theoretically, I would have been six seconds, 550 feet. If you are his ledge, <laughs> the hoof sound does not go away. That's, that's what I'm trying to figure. Thank you. You understand me. Uh, give me just one second. You said, you said you'd be how far? 550 feet? Right, did you go a full minute? Uh, that was 30 seconds. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. If I did a full minute, I would be at uh, at eleven hundred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, just a light jog. It is. Pretty much. Uh, you were you were just about at the the time that you're gonna turn around and stop running, and you see that the the trees there's a a break in the trees, and um. And you can see a clearing beyond that. And you uh you clear out of the trees. And you see just the edge of uh your friends up ahead of you. Does it loot? Interesting. And since I moved your token, if I killed it again, yeah. just let me know. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I followed where it went to, and I had it, you know, still clicked on so I could see it in darkness. Um. So, yeah. yeah, and so you, it, you, you, you hear the galloping now more, and that certainly looks like the rest of your party up there. Um. How about the? How about again? Give me a perception roll. Okay. Perception. 20. You, uh, looking around for the galloping, you kind of look back to the, the west just a little bit, and there's Raven, who has just popped out of the tree line. Hmm. So the galloping seems to be coming from, from that direction. Well, the galloping seem to be coming from all around, but as you spot Raven, the galloping is less, is less, it is less, and then suddenly it is gone. And we're back to just just a handful of birds. And what if we try talking to the people up ahead? I. I agree. I, I think that uh, test pretty much proves what was or shows us at least a little bit of what's happening here. Um, and then uh, Sledge will uh, look down and he's still in his sauna clothes. Oh, oh, this is um, and he'll snap his fingers and the uh, shimmer um, weave cloth uh, will change something more akin to um, 
if uh, if there were tuxedos of togas, that's what that's what this is. Um, so you know, it comes across. You know, it's it's mostly bare chested as usual. It goes down into to a smaller uh, mm-hmm. uh, setup above the knees, um, but uh, you know, inlaid and, and looking nice with with gold thread. And I'm ready to entertain. Um, and uh, Sledge will start uh, slowly um, trotting up, not a care in the world, um, up the path here, waiting for his friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what thread do the rest of you follow him? Or are you sending him out to be the proverbial <laughs> guinea pig? I, <laughs> I, I mean, I know my brother's ahead. Um I'll probably uh, head over to my brother if I can. Okay. Um, and then kind of see you if just, he heads forward. Or not. You just find me while I'm trying to hide in the grass, and you're just like, don't, don't, tromping. What are you all doing? Time. Hey, hey, are you stealthing? What's going on? What's, what you doing over here? What's happening? Are you in the grass, silly? <laughs> what are you doing? You're gonna get all dirty. Guys, we can hear you. Um... <laughs> Uh, 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 when we, uh, or when I get a, a little closer, um, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to, uh, kind of call out like, why that is a magnificent beast. Oh, what, what is that? I, and I, I, go- I, I don't, we've never seen it. Oh my goodness. Hello. It's, is, is he yours? Is he oh. yours? Well, I know the resemblance and and I'm sort of like pointing back and forth between the abs and um, well, you know, I was I was looking for him. Abzerham, will you come back over here Um, and I'll kind of uh, have him come this way and um, float near me and uh, well met uh, Sledge Swolehoof and uh, you are and I'm sort of kind of presenting myself to this first uh person here uh oh what why uh, yes it, it, gosh it's it is always nice to have visitors of 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 people kind and of 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 his kind gesturing at uh your your very girthy owl i uh, straight up thought when you were approaching like what a mag- I thought you were doing like a what a magnificent beast. Oh, stop it. Like I thought you were introducing <laughs> yourself. Beast. Like that beast who's is that, me, Sled. <laughs> who's that hot guy over there? Oh, oh geez, my stop, fans. guys. Stop. You guys, you guys weren't close enough. Next time. Next time. Uh, is, uh why why hello. Uh, my my name is is Morlin. Uh and and this here uh is Trina. Uh, uh, oh, gosh, it, what brings you to town? We so rarely so rarely get visitors. Well, and, uh, and they will—they will actually both step down. Uh, they seem completely friendly. The, they don't seem to be kind of malicious or cagey at all. I stand up out of the grass. <laughs> what to tell mom and dad you're using grass again? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my god, it's like I'm being punished. I mean. Ryan isn't even here, and I'm just being punished like all the time. Oh my I god, is that a grass? That's illegal. <laughs> uh, well met, uh, uh Morlan uh, Trina. Um, we are new to uh, town, um, actually, just uh, traveling through, and when Gan and uh, Aerith, you know, sort of start uh, approaching uh, out of the grass. Um, I'll kind of uh, look over at them and then back to uh, more land. And uh, I apologize. I am just no good with uh, with maps or locale. Where are we exactly? Trina steps in. Oh, well, you're in Wisteria Vale, stranger. This is this is the, the finest bit of farm living uh, this side of Baldur's Gate. Wisteria Vale, uh, and then in uh, the telepathic bond um, to the group, uh, th- these uh, these folks um, apparently are from the title of the book. Um, did we have anything in? 
particular other than where Quill is uh, that we needed to talk to these people about? Well, we know the story is a play, so the odds are if they think they're in the story, whatever part of the story will happen, right? I I might be wrong in thinking this, but was the town with the well not one of the victims of the work of Quill while he was under the mind control, the curse, whatever? And that perhaps... Oh, no. Do you think to, he's coming? To fill time, I'm I'm sort of uh, itching Abzorham, and I'm, uh, oh, uh, Farmington, what do you grow as this conversation is happening uh, in, in our mind? Sure, sure. Do you uh, think that means he's going to come and attack this place while we're here? I cannot say. I just that is what I think I remember hearing the Harper lady say. If it is a play, and Quill, one of the main protagonists, then what role does Sorn play, and how much will he mess up uh, what supposedly is is in this play uh, just by being here? And out loud, uh, potatoes, uh, wheat. Uh, well, uh, what, Jimmy, what is it? Just- it's it's pretty much just a little bit of everything. I mean, we're we're not we're not growing to to feed a big city. We just grow for ourselves. So we do potatoes and we do corn and and they just start rattling off kind of a laundry list of just basic like mon- mundane vegetables, shrimp sandwiches. Yeah, it's shrimp. very yes, much yes, very yes. much like that scene. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, and do we, uh, well, well, roses. I mean, well, I mean, most folks don't eat roses. Well, but you can make rose water, and it's that kind of digression. That they're, they're in, just locked in. In my head, I'm like, okay, we, we have a few moments. Um, so. <laughs> well, you could always ask them if they've seen the other group. Since they were a little bit of a head start on us. Unless they were doing what we were trying to do and sneak around the outside until we found out that it kind of comes back around again. Wasn't thought- there something about a new traveler? A traveling salesman or something? There was. They mentioned a merchant coming to town. Um, Also, um, this just occurred to me. If we'd read the book, we'd probably know what part of the story we're in. But we'll worry about that at a later time. Uh, (laughs) You can always go back to Candlekeep. Oh, Oh. you don't know how to go back to Candlekeep, do you? (laughs) You just open a book. Oh, ah, uh, goodness. Oh, now no. we're stuck. You're gonna have to send a search party for us. <laughs> Soon it's just thousands of people inside. Don't let the door close. Oh, oh son of a oh, bitch. Damn it. Oh. Perhaps we will be lucky, and Riala will have read the book for when she gets here. We like end up learning the plot of the book just from living it over and over again. Like, <laughs> I can see. You know, I had actually. not thought about a Groundhog's Day scenario, but but keep talking because I'm writing. <laughs> I, I can see Riley actually reading the book. Like, look at these idiots, and like you know, actually read us mm-hmm. doing dumb stuff within the uh, within the the uh, play. For some uh, reason she she writes in the book something about your your owl, and it just transforms in front of you like. What the? <laughs> Sledge gets really fat. <laughs> like, no. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep uh, no. feeding me that. You strike that from the record, sir. <laughs> uh, and uh, so that's 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 about all. I mean, we, again, we just grow enough for us. We uh, we don't really export anything. We're we're not we're not high and fancy like that. But uh, but so, uh, did are you just are you here by yourself? Oh well, um, I, I have a, a few friends. Uh, um, oh, they're not more nearly... more visitors. Uh, this is this is a big day. Well, I, yes, I mean they're not nearly as conditioned as I am. I I got out a little bit ahead. Uh, oh, um, on the way up though, I uh, in between you um, looking at my magnificent owl. Uh, is that I, what it is? Is that it's an owl? Oh. I've never seen yes. one that looks like that. Well, he works out. Uh, and mm. uh, I, I I thought I had heard mention of, of uh, a merchant coming, a new merchant even. Um, it, uh, yes, uh, it's right, right up in the in the marketplace. And she she gestures kind of up into this area here. 
uh, or just just in the marketplace. There's only a couple of vendors out today, but uh, but he he is all the way in from Baldur's Gate selling. He's got little little tiny kegs of 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 ales that are brewed and 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 casked up there in in Baldur's Gate. Can you imagine? My, that sounds delectable. Oh, oh um, and uh, Aerith, are you making yourself known? <laughs> I just didn't want to be like, oh, there's my friend right there. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, you are just a vision. How are you? But while you, you can you can hear this this conversation, Narcissus happening, and I will tell you that as you're kind of moving around the outside, this tree right back here that I'm pinging uh, does the same thing that the one at the fork did. It just all the color drains out of it and it's in just kind of grayscale suddenly. Oh, fork. <laughs> uh, is that, oh, and is that is that one of your friends out there too laying down in the grass? The grass is real soft here. We like to lay in it too sometimes and look at the clouds. Yeah, that's my brother. He's quite simple. He just just enjoys the the smaller things in life. What well, that he's gonna fit in here good. <laughs> brother, I found more of your people. <laughs> <laughs> Something for a psychic dagger to come flying at you. <laughs> they are simpletons, just like you. Well, yeah, this is a simple town. You are right. Uh, uh, but oh, are, 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 are you interested in 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 in, uh, in in the marketplace? Maybe trying to buy some buy some of the big city beer. Uh, well, that would be magnificent. Uh, uh, Aerith, um, Gen, are you are you coming? Um, and uh, I will. Uh, any other sights in the town we should see? Uh, I, I mean, I know the the potato and the rose water and the. Uh, but, but but aside from the market, anywhere else exciting? <sighs> well, uh, we could think. Uh, uh, well, oh, they could look at the. I mean, for people that ain't from here, there's didn't really nothing ever a whole lot exciting. I mean, sometimes things get. Uh, Get kind of kind of rowdy and ruckus at the at the at the tavern, but uh, but we we normally wait till night time for that. But uh, but you know it it'll be it'll be upon us. Where where is this tavern? Oh oh goodness, it's just right up ahead. It's called Blossom's Rest. Blossom's um, Rest. Yeah. And is this where everyone sort of goes for a drink at the end of the day? It, well, yeah, like most everybody. I mean, they're. There are some who are kind of severe here, if you know, and don't go and have a drink. But uh, but for the most part, people go. Everyone goes there for a, for a relax. And she gestures that it is. If I get my pointer, it's just further into the town this way. Um, have you have you met anyone else come through here recently? Oh well, it, yeah, yeah. The uh, uh, Mick, who's selling, who's selling the beer that we just talked about. He's a, uh, he's, he's just right up there. He's the nicest fella. The nicest fella. Okay. The just the nicest fella. Just the nicest fella. All right. Mm. Gen, are you still in the grass? <laughs> no, I'm not in the grass. I stood up out of the grass. Raven, well, it, you, you had noticed, Raven, that the that tree had lost color as well. And as soon as you get to it, it's just as though somebody turned the spigot on. It just fills fills back up with color completely. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Aerith. No, I was just going to I was just going uh, to say just making people. making fun of my NPCs is what you're doing. I, I, Aerith, Aerith doesn't even, Aerith doesn't think these are people. Aerith thinks this is like a fake. <laughs> this is the equivalent of like, I guess, her thinking like a video game. She's like, okay, so real. roll, uh, roll, roll an insight. All right. This is when you're like, no, these are real people. And I'm like, oh, whoops. <laughs> uh, seven. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they seem just like the, the real, the sweetest things, just the real the sweetest, sweetest people. things. Can I attempt insight? I want to see if I can figure it out. 
Sure, I'll, I will let you, especially since you're kind of off to the side and and taking it all in from a third third party. Sorry, kind of... I, I, it's all right. I, I, They're the sweetest things, walk up not her brother. <laughs> Don't know why I had, a, had advantage there, but regardless, That's right. little 21. Like, so, don't get me wrong. Me as a player loves these NPCs. Aerith doesn't have time for this. <laughs> um, you don't think that they are deceiving you at all, but you have known simple people, and, and this this is like a blueprint of just a, a textbook simple person. Um, again, you don't feel any deception from them. Uh, they just, they don't seem to have a whole lot going on upstairs. Aerith, is it just me or do these people seem like caricatures? Oh, 100%. I think we just need to keep going until we find someone like us. She raises an eyebrow and in her head is like, you know, someone real. <laughs> I, are you are you guys telepathying all of this or or are you I, saying I, I it out loud? I was assuming that I was. Yeah. I was assuming we were telepathy. Okay, okay. I I would imagine it was on the group calm rather than just gotcha. us two. Oh, could be, could be. Gotcha. We never know. <laughs> um, well, uh, thank you, Morlan and <clears throat> Trina. That was uh, uh, excellent. Um, I think I'm going to check out this new merchant in town. Um, oh, all right. You get you some of that beer before it's all gone. Well, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I will start kind of making my way in the direction of, of the uh, market there. Okay. Uh, and right before Abzerham, uh, you know, leaves, he gives them one good, uh, you know, crunch with the. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. <laughs> that, that frightened me a little bit. <laughs> Yes, the, the power can be overwhelming. Um, and uh, I will uh, continue towards the, the uh, marketplace there. Yep. Aerith, just the sledge is like, I feel like you could just talk to those people all day. <laughs> They're just free compliments all around, aren't they? <laughs> I literally was thinking of setting up shop right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to live here forever, guys. <laughs> this Don't would come be perfect back. for him. <laughs> Yeah, so you uh, you move up, and and again, this is when she says marketplace. It's it's kind of a a wide packed dirt spot, uh, and you can see that there are there are a couple of tables, and um, there's there's one woman who is at the uh, this north uh, western corner here, who is she seems to be the proprietor of that one, and you see a kind of a fresh faced man uh, over here at this other one. But uh, there's nobody, no one currently buying anything. Is everybody make a perception check, please? Yeah, actually, I was just gonna ask if on the way when we were walking up there, if I could look to see if there was like footprints or like how much traffic would look like it's going through here. Um, Ooh, nice. Bam, bam, thank you. <laughs> Ready. Uh, uh, the, oof. Look at the twins now that they're out of the grass. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, we're in business. Yeah, we, we are. see everything. <laughs> so, we um, see everything. So, uh, Sledge, you, you're, you don't kind of notice a whole lot about what I'm about to say because you are looking for, for footprints. And I will say that, I mean, even just around you, you notice that you're not really kind of marking the ground with your footprints, especially this hard pack area is. It's hard packed, so it, it's, it doesn't really leave a whole lot of trace. Um, Narcissus, I think you're still puzzling about the the tree that you saw over there, but uh, but Aerith with a 23 and um, Gin with a 20 and Raven with a 24. You notice that for a town, there's just not a whole lot of people. And, and maybe that's not out of the ordinary, but, you know, if a... a to a, a marketplace and and a tavern is it just you'd think that maybe there'd be a few more so but there's plenty of town you haven't seen so maybe they're just not here at the moment guys maybe we go to, to stuff that actually has you know color in it 
mean, that's going to be the, uh, the hint hint here. <laughs> Just a thought. I wonder, do, you, do we know if time moves differently in these books? We were not not told anything about that. What um, if okay. a world without consequence, what if he's genuinely lost his mind and it's not some spell? Well, the... I'm right uh, here on the call, guys. <laughs> I'm right, I'm right here, guys. Shut uh, up. <laughs> <laughs> <Coming> strike. <laughs> um, so, uh, to my recollection, I, the Harpers had actually created this place um, and put him, Quill, in this place. Um, now... Uh, I'm assuming at this point he has sort of turned it into his own playground um, of sorts. Uh, but do you think he could have gotten powerful enough to actually mess with the the prison, as it were, the, this plane? I think he could have fun with it. I don't like we don't know how long he's been in here if time moves differently for all we know he could be the king of this land <laughs> should we assume that everyone we talk to is him or can get the information to him um... oh, I don't think they're him but I think that I feel like if we were to cause a scene it would maybe get his attention uh, players looking for ways to kill NPCs. I love it. <laughs> I just think if we were to like slaughter this town, maybe he would notice us or something. Oh. What was that spell? Fire. Uh, <laughs> notice me, senpai. Um, I want to show my cool moves to Narcissus. <laughs> well, uh, this place is supposed to be his prison, so would it not make sense that the people in here are his jailers and that they would do their best to play the role to keep them content to not want to leave here hmm you think they're real people I have my doubts I, I think they're well I've seen illusions before and some have been really lifelike I wouldn't put past this this, this was created with magic after all I mean, Sled, you can chime in on this. You spewed something from your, your muscle magazine. <laughs> it's muscle Wizard Month. You have a subscription. I signed you up myself. Come on, Raven. Uh, the, uh, the, hey, that, that subscription you did 10 minutes ago doesn't count. <laughs> it's, it hasn't delivered yet. The The sky, while it is is very clear, cloudless, nice, pretty, like the best sky blue you've ever seen, just kind of out of nowhere, just a very, very light rain begins to fall. But again, there are no clouds, just the slightest bit of rain. Um, Sledge is going to continue walking towards uh, the, the fresh faced fellow here. Mm -hmm. um, as he's walking up that way, um, uh -huh. he will be through the bond um, saying, I, I could, uh, well, I could look around uh, through magical means and, and see what's magic and not, but my fear is that everything here will be magic. So uh, I don't know how much that, that sight will help us in this case. Um, and when I get kind of within hailing distance, uh, I'm uh, well met. Uh, are, are you the new merchant in town? Um, as I'm sort of walking this way, uh, and Abzraham will take a take post up on this tree up in the corner there. Okay. Give me just one second to uh, open a little bit up there for... for. Well, I guess you're not technically looking through Abzraham, so I won't... No. Oh, he's... but he, he can telepathy it to you, though, so I need to open it up. So just get a little bit of... a little bit of polygon reveal. 
That sweet, sweet polygon reveal. <laughs> sweet googly polygon. Right. It's um, my second favorite reveal. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> And oh. as, as as you I'm just gonna push you right on past that, as as you say, uh, another great reveal. Anyway, continue, continue. You say hello. He uh, he he sees and he waves you at you and he he says, "Hey, Shaka, come on over, brah. Dig it, man." Hey, bro. Um, but it's like two different. It's like muscle talk and like. Uh, um, like reggae talk, right? Like it's too different. They both end in bros, but it's different connotations. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, hey, Mutt. Everybody calls me Mickey. How, uh, how you doing? Uh, hello, Mickey. I'm a uh, sledge and this is Aerith. Uh, we hear you're new to town and, and have wares that are just, we cannot pass on. Um, and I will sort of look over what he's displaying. Um, what does he have there? Well, are you, uh, my friend, you, you've made a good choice, but you, you unfortunately have just missed it. I, I, I just, I just sold out my, my last two pony kegs, uh, I, I, just as, as you were walking over here. Oh, well, that is, uh, well, I slam to... the table to who? <laughs> uh, and he looks around and he points, uh, off to... The east. Uh oh yeah, that uh that guy that guy right there. You can see just the 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 sliver of of somebody who has two uh they're like you know, like three gallon kind of little ponies of of beer, and um it, you you see him just as he cuts around a corner and goes out of your sight. I I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna give you just a pinch more here that because this is this is a building that that's that's how you lose him is that there's a building there. I communicate what was just said telepathically to the group and begin running. Uh, you how big are these squares again? Are they five feet? I They're five feet. So. Yeah, five feet. I I start running. I just take off in a sprint towards his direction. Uh, looking at uh, um, Mick here, I'm, uh, we're very thirsty. Uh, do excuse us. Um, well, now I, I I do have this the the, the samples. I, I I've I, that's I I can't sell you anything, but I have free samples. Well, I mean, obviously you've seen my friend. This is a matter of life and thirst. Your ale is that good, um, and. Uh, uh, I'm going to send Abzerham up towards this alleyway to the north here as I, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, get up to these trees as I'm like, Aerith, they're just drinks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and All we'll right. go um, walking after Aerith like, well, someone's got to keep an eye on her. All right, getting some... Some stuff opened here, so Abzerham can see uh, uh, another couple of buildings there. Aerith, by the time you get there, you can see you're starting to come back to the edge of uh, edge of the forest there a little bit. You see a person uh, standing. Uh, or she's she's actually sitting sitting in a chair, just seemingly enjoying the day a little bit. Um, she is not who you saw with the beer, and um, you there's there's some trees and stuff in the forest up there. So he may the person your your Corey may still be headed that direction. You just have to uh, you just have to go after it. Uh, it, it just out of nowhere, the rain, the little light drizzle of rain that was falling just stops it doesn't it doesn't peter out it doesn't mm -hmm. you just you know kind of turn into slower drips it just it's it's very lightly falling sheet rain and then it's gone so i saw him come round this corner correct mm -hmm. so i'm going to assume he's gone up this direction so i'm going to keep heading over there okay what tell me what narcissus and raven are up to you guys are on the other side of the map 
mm-hmm. causing mm-hmm. all of this rain. Uh, Narcissus, <laughs> as she's been walking, has just slowly like been looking around at everybody's faces and taking little bits from them to make her face just look more like everybody else is here Ooh, and changing her clothes to fit in with everybody as well she's kind of gone for like a piecemeal face so she doesn't look exactly like anybody else here so it won't be like oh shit there's two of them right there um but it's more like she can pass through the crowd without anybody thinking otherwise like thinking second thoughts gotcha okay yeah i i, I dig it i'm into it uh raven uh well raven is keeping note of that change that the narcissist is doing again and she also did it back when uh, we all first met up yet she couldn't really do it to with my character since i wear a mask and uh then uh, since i heard getting uh mental messages i'm gonna make my way across towards uh t- towards Aerith. okay Sledge, what are you into? Uh, I'll go ahead and move uh, at will there, Raven. Mm-hmm. Sledge, what are you into? So, Sledge, um, seeing uh, nothing around this corner, uh, I'm going to move Abzerham up to uh, the following building up there. Okay. Uh, and then Sledge himself. Uh, do any of these buildings have... Um, like what's the the exterior the facade do they have windows or yeah they they seem to be uh like like little shops or little stores or like some some storage outbuildings i mean it's it's kind of how you would imagine a uh things in a farm town a very small farm town to look okay and um uh... It, uh, yeah, so there there are windows. If if you if you were to peek inside of one, uh, we can go further. But yeah, I mean there there are doors on them, and most of them you know have a, have a like a handle, but also a lock on the outside. So you imagine that these are people's homes and and businesses and and storage places. Got you. Um, um, Abraham can see just the edge of someone um, who is hightailing it into the forest disappeared just about here 20 25 30 all right so i will uh abzerham will come i'm sorry sledge i will run around this corner here uh and to the group telepathically um i will let them know that to the northeast um the swole owl abzerham <laughs> has uh noted someone um in that direction and Abzerham has another I think 25 10 15 so I don't know if this reveals much more but he'll kind of fly that way trying to stay on his trail for sure for sure Let me get back over there apologies no you are groovy um I want a tavern called the Swole Owl now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we can do this. We can take all of our, well, all of our my, profits, put it together, of, make a it tavern. Could happen. You can it, do uh, live shows. <laughs> you get out of my head, Aerith. Um, it, uh, it, it, it is the, the forest again. It, it's similar to the, the pictures you saw in your head that Raven had of entering kind of the forest and then also the same forest that she could come out of on the other side. Understood. And, and with that, I think sledge will stop, uh, and relay that information uh, it ran through the forest, but if it was anything like our test with Raven, he should be coming out on the West over here. Um, only if he goes so far, if I had to guess true, I mean, true. I did cover a lot of ground. Um, so yeah, I mean that's about all. I mean I would continue probably. I'd probably have Sledge kind of go to this corner, and then I'd have Abs or Ham. Um, how uh, how many feet is it? As long as I'm within a half mile, I can like uh, not communicate really, but say fly there and go back. Right? No, it's a hundred feet for commands. Okay, for telepathy. I think that the the half mile rule is an older rule that they got rid of for five e. Understood. I so think I'm, that was a four e rule. He doesn't. And have man, any it more pains me every so. time. It's like yeah, like yeah. No, it's only one hundred and twenty feet. Sorry. 
Uh, he's uh, Absarham is out of movement anyway. If if we were kind of putting this around a turn type uh, setup, so that's what I would do. I'd communicate like he's running through the woods, and it's likely that with how this dimension works, he might pop up on the west of us. Uh, okay, yeah. So he he uh, Ab Absarham is at the the edge of the forest, and while he can fly over the top and kind of get you that type of information the trees are the trees and the canopy are a little much to for him to be able to see down in and and clock exactly what's happening understood um so Aerith, you um you know about like you see where Abzerham is and you know that's about where sledge said that the the quarry had disappeared okay Oh, I'm not as fast as this owl. Um, <laughs> you got to work on your core. Um. <laughs> 20, 25, 30. Uh, can I just like, like as if I had the dash, dash action, action? Ooh, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, this is, this is, it's not an initiative, but it's kind of like free form. Yeah, I'm within, trying to like within the structure of actions. I don't want to just like run off yeah, or anything yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, yeah, so I, I get to the forest um, and I will be keeping an eye out for any tracks, any sign of a person, anything like that. Um, uh, you can make an investigation check, but like, like I said to, to Sledge earlier, there there's, don't seem to be a lot of prints and things left, but go ahead and roll. And if you if you just knock it out of the park, then we'll probably let I you just, find something. I know he's carrying two barrels so he can't mm. really be running. It doesn't appear that he's dumped them anywhere either. So he can't be as fast as I am and I'm running full speed. So I'm going to hope that there's something. Well, that's true, not. but do you have plot armor? Um, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, what, uh, I, what, I will, what I will tell you is that standing at the edge there where where he disappeared, you notice that on the, like the, the bark of one of the trees there, is just a little small square of red fabric. I will take that and look at it. Roll a roll a perception on it, if you would. Not twenty. Yeah. Damn. The when you when you when you touch it and look at it, it immediately calls to mind the the color and even the texture of the uh, the robes worn by some of the custodians at Candlekeep. And I mean, you think about the one that you saw right before you captured that guy two sessions ago. There was one of the custodians in his red robe dead. <clears throat> and you this the color is that exact color the fabric is the exact style of fabric okay uh i will re once again relay this information to the group it wasn't what i saw the gentleman wearing that i was tailing was it you know what with since you rolled a 20 yeah it, it, the what okay. you could see the the back of him was just the 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 back edge of a red cape a red cloak of some kind and just to check, does this look like it was uh, placed there? Does it like it was torn off on some branches? It, it looks. It looks like it. It, it got was hung and snagged and and just okay. tore off a little. Um, I will uh, continue to follow the trail then. And can I continue it. to follow her? Sure. And right before uh, Absraham would get out of range, I would uh, direct to stick close to Aerith mm -hmm. uh, and help where and when available, uh, if need be. Okay. Uh, Narcissus, you have moved up a little bit more. I'm going to open some vision for you. Um, are you still just kind of playing it easy and... Uh... Yeah, just trying to keep an eye out, see if there's anybody I would recognize from the group that we were fighting, but also um, looking for any disturbances. Mm, okay. 
Roll a roll a perception check to see if you recognize anyone. Mm. <laughs> That's a twenty-five. Uh, you you straight you straight don't recognize anybody though. Hearing about the red cloak and and, and the, like hearing Aerith describe that and that that for sure calls back a memory that one of the people who went into that building uh, behind the wall of force was in a red cloak like that. And it, it was difficult for you guys to tell whether he was being abducted and, and kind of pushed to go in there or just roughly handled. But, uh, but you did see someone in a red robe get, get pushed into that building. I would relay that back to the party. Well, also, anyway, they'd hear it. So, How long does Rary's telepathic bond last? I believe it's uh, eight hours, but let me double check. Oh, I'm sorry, one hour, one hour. Ah, oh, God, even still, I, I'm taking this on a character in some other game of mine. I don't know which, but this mm -hmm. is game-breaking to the maximum. Yes. And I love it. Um you're welcome, Sledge. <laughs> <laughs> be honest, given the way we play this, we kind of need something to break. Um, yeah, I should, you know, I was going to make it so that uh, it was required. Do you know how you have to say like over uh, for radio communication? <laughs> I, I, I was going to say that, yeah, for to use this, you have to say like some sort of like, let's. I, I, th I think it's spot me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> over and spot me. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's uh, cycle back around. Uh, oh, Raven, uh, you're still just closing closing distance. Yeah, so I'm gonna end up as you actually... cross as you cross the square. Mickey, Mickey was like, "Hey, how's it going? Would you like a little?" Bit of a... And you just ran past, so he wasn't able to give you any of his free sample. So I'm, uh, I'll be back in a minute, <laughs> and uh, I bolt, and I end up here. As yay monk speed. <laughs> Oof. Yes, Aerith, you're, <laughs> ju you're just about to like, go into the forest and shoo, past you is uh, is Raven uh, entering the forest. Uh, do you do you follow as well? Well, yeah, Aerith's going to keep going. As, as he uh, passes by, she's going to let out a sigh. She's like, damn monks. <laughs> hey, wasn't she on the other side of that building way way back there <laughs> <laughs> and uh no she's yeah she's gonna keep uh going uh going in uh keeping an eye out for any more potential torn uh remains of the cloth uh okay so why don't you move up and i'll give you a little bit of reveal and then we can roll to see if you see anything So, because I'm going to be rolling, I'm not going to take the dash action. Uh, okay. That is a 15. Um, now that you kind of know what you're looking for, you don't see any more cloth, but you, at the same level that the cloth had been torn, you definitely see there are a couple of, um, a couple of trees that have just a little bit of uh, bark that's askew or out of place. Um, so you, you're, you're, you, you would intuit that it's somebody who is still trying to hold on to two barrels of beer and is not able to agilely go between the trees. Yeah. Does it appear, uh, at least relevant, not relevant, at least, um, at least obvious to me that the person is aware of us following? Like, does it seem like they're off in a hurry? That's uh, from that alone. It's hard to say, but from all of the other pieces of that, you looked and saw him as he was ducking, and then there's the owl, and he's just seemingly booking. It seems as though it, he's booking it for sure. You probably think that that you've been made, though. Yeah. We just want to ask you some questions. Stop running. <laughs> the uh. You you yell that and then just 
especially for for Aerith and and Raven, but but Gen as well. There's just an overwhelming just the the noxious smell of of brimstone and there's just that that acrid kind of burning n nose flaring smell just suddenly all around you. I'm going to do like the, uh, the anime or, uh, you know, movies where they like, get the ninjas running through the trees, you know, basically Naruto harness, but kind of <laughs> like doing that, but also being stealthy because I'd still be moving at a, at a 30 speed, even at half my speed. Okay. Uh, and... yeah. Uh, go ahead and, and move yourself up again. You've closed distance. What are you, are you just uh, trying to get into the, the mix here? Yeah, I'm going to move into the, I'm going to move into the forest as well. Okay. A little more quietly than my sister. <laughs> Almost like we have the same idea, except I'm running through the trees. <laughs> All sneaky like. <laughs> um All right, we will uh you yeah, the again the brimstone is just it's pervasive here. Um sledge. Hmm. Ooh. Um, okay, so uh, Abs or Ham is sticking close to Aerith, um, just flexing for her, just like hardcore. Now he's now that he's out of Sledge's sight, you know, he's trying to show off. Um, so let's see. Um, I mean, it, I wouldn't have it any other way that you're familiar was trying to show off. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, you're getting little like owl half head spin winks there, Aerith. Um, <laughs> uh let's see uh sledge kind of playing on a hunch and knowing narcissus to be to the west here is actually 10 15 20 25 30 35 he's going to uh move to there um as see what he can see okay uh again it's uh a smattering of of buildings um no no people over on this side um but you you for sure see a a smattering of of, of the back sides of buildings okay um in that case sledge would probably kind of continue just moving this direction kind of playing off the hunch that he saw with raven um and uh sort of heading in that direction uh hopefully to kind of intersect with uh, narcissus if she's moving up this way as well Okay. Uh, yep, and uh, yep, that is it. That is what I am doing. Narcissus. Um. So I can kind of see these people over here outside this building. I'd kind of be looking towards them and seeing what's going on. I'm uh, sorry. Which which people? Yes. Yeah, so you see, uh, you see these two people uh, by this building. You wanna you wanna head that way and yeah, and I wanna kind of like they're... eavesdrop in. See if I can like. If there's anything interesting that's been happening, uh, well, at this range, they they notice you entirely, and they're 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 happy to see you, but they're also minorly perplexed. Uh, it's like, oh my 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 my! But more more people. What? Wait, are you, you're are you passing through? You're you're not from here. You're you don't live here. You're you're passing through, right? So you're you I'm, you you, I'm in, Trina's you in, cousin. You Trina's in, cousin. Okay. You intuit from that that your your small changes that you've been doing to somewhat fit in are helping. But uh again they they sort of recognize you, but sort of also think that you are someone from the outside. I I oh I I, I did did just did you know Trina had a cousin and, and uh, welcome, welcome. Thank you for thank you for coming to our humble town. This is this. Is, he pats the wall behind him. This is the Blossoms Rest. It's the the tavern in the center of the village here, and it is it's the it's the best one around. Well, I mean, it's the only one around, but which makes it the best one around. Uh well, what a! I've heard it's a place for a good drink. Uh, oh my goodness, it is. It's it, and not only a drink. There are sometimes we've been known to. Have a little bit of song and dance, if you know what I'm talking about. Really, I'd, I'd love to have a little session. 
Uh, oh, 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 do you play? I do. I'm, I like oh. to play the accordion. Oh, my dear. I like and, how and, lively it is. Well, I, uh, sorry, I got to switch my tool back here. Uh, well, I am uh, Ulrich, and uh, this is my wife, Daphne, and we would we would love to have you come out and uh, and, and play tonight. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's, we try not to drink this early in the day, and and so there's there's just nobody in at the moment. But uh, but we would love to have to have you come back and uh, and and either sit in or just kind of just play something for us on your own or. I mean, gosh, we just even love to, to to hear stories too. We uh, you know, don't get a lot of visitors through here. And since you your your cousin's one of ours, you're kind of like family. So lovely to hear. I there were a few tri like adventurers, I think they call themselves, who like escorted me here while I was coming in. You don't um, mean it. Ad adventurers in our town, Ulrich. That. We are going to be the next biggest thing. We are growing up. I know. I'm hoping that maybe we can get them to tell some stories and we can get a nice little jig going on tonight. Well, darling, you just you just come back at just whenever you think it's it's time for that, and and we can we can make that happen. You damn right, we can make that happen. Now, if you uh, you just excuse us, we're we're trying to get cleaned up and and get things ready because tonight we gotta. Special guest. <laughs> uh, she kind of like curtsies a little bit and like starts walking off. Okay. We'll come back to our group in the forest. How do you split the party on one map? My players can do it. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the smell of the, the, of the brimstone, the, the hot, ashy, acrid odor just almost as if a breeze blew it away just leaves leaves your noses and suddenly things are normal forest smells again uh trees the wood you know soft earth and Aerith, uh if you'd like to do something i i mean i'm just going to keep trying to find him i'm just going to keep heading forward um okay. uh Probably only another. I mean, I'm gonna keep one, two, three, four, five. Let's head there, and then I'll do another investigation. To see if I can discern any kind of direction potentially he's heading. Oh, I accidentally rolled twice. Sorry. Oh, did That's I? right. Uh, yeah. Well, I have a 15 and a 7. Did you roll them both? I uh, don't know if the 15 is old or. I, I think the 15 was. Uh... The first one you've done. So old. Oh, okay. Oh, so old. it's old. Yeah. Okay. Nothing like those uh, old rolls hanging out in roll twenty. Uh, well, yeah, with a seven, there, there's, there's not, not kind of a lot, but it may be because now you there, there are several of you in here, kind of on your side. Um. But uh, you don't with a seven, you don't really glean a, a whole lot. Being here, could I help investigate? Maybe. Uh, if you were closer, you could. I, I will let you do your okay. own uh, investigation when, okay, when right now because we're gonna move to you <laughs> again. Okay, I'll move up. Uh, yeah, I can move up to there at least, around there at least, and I'll um, pull on my investigation. Let's see what we got. Twenty-one. So you. You get up and you stop and you stretch out and you you smell the unmistakable just the the slightest whiff of beer and it is um it, it is not seemingly the shared experience like the, with the brimstone and the other things you you distinctly smell kind of from this area here uh what smells like beer. Someone's been drinking. Do you smell that? And as he points it out, you the both uh, both Raven and Aerith, you can start to pick up just the the edge of those notes of uh, of beer coming from just up ahead of you. Honestly, or oh, he spilt it. Hmm. 
Either way, it gives us a trail to follow. I keep heading up towards it. Uh, Raven, let's see what Raven wants to do. Okay, okay. so still further due east is what he said, correct? Uh, yeah, kind of from somewhere in this range area okay. here. All right, so east and a little north. East and a little north, yeah. Okay. Because I was kind of half thinking it was going to be somewhere swinging that way. So I'm going to keep with my uh, my Naruto running through the uh, trees <laughs> and my nice stealthiness to... Uh, uh, so I will go over that way. All right. Yeah, I will. I will hold up a second here for, um, well, darkness reasons. For sure. For sure. For sure. <laughs> you, uh, oh, stand by. While you're holding up, can I get you to? make a dexterity saving throw. We found okay. something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is a 12 on the die. So that is 23. You, uh, you run up a little bit and suddenly you have to dodge out of the way because the, the, the guy that was presumably the one running with the red cloak, there's, he has, hit a low hanging branch. And so one of the barrels of beer lay smashed on the ground next to him, decidedly where the smell is coming from. The other one lays on the ground next to him and he is on the ground out cold. And that is where we're going to take our 10 minute break. When we left just a few short minutes ago, the, uh, the, the party had, had, had gone into the book and has made their way into the demiplane of Wisteria Vale. They were talking up some of the inhabitants, and um, they saw someone in a, in a red robe, similar to the custodians at, at Candlekeep, and began to give chase and chase this individual through the forest, who apparently had a really bad role with a one, and a tree and he has uh he has run himself face first into a low hanging tree branch uh smashed one of the barrels of beer that he was carrying and uh raven is right on top of him and that is where we resume <clears throat> so he is unconscious as you said since not he brained himself correct well correct. i'm going to just mentally let them know uh, watch out for the low branch. One barrel broken. He's on the ground, and I'm still moving. So I'm gonna finish what would be the uh, oh the, re half the, of my... the rest of your movement. Okay. Yeah. Do we know roughly where he is, so we can head to his location? Or uh, well, re remember that you that you you smelled the the beer earlier. Yeah. So okay. I think so that... we can just head to the smell. Yeah, I think yeah, that you can you can you can head that way. And then I'm just going to continue my way in through the trees to, you know. I'm going to end up right in this darkness. <laughs> oh, don't go there. That's where death is. Awesome. That's where I am. <laughs> All righty. As I'm basically like, you know, keeping myself nice and creeping through the, through the trees to, in case if the, the others of the group are somewhere close by, too, that he was going maybe towards. Okay. Um, Aerith. Uh, so I run forward. I approach the fallen gentleman. Mm -hmm. um, while he is down, um, I will use my hemp rope to bind his arms, uh, legs, and also into his mouth as well. So just kind of a full body wrap around um, Scooby-Doo style. Um, Kinkies. And I will also, <laughs> if possible. You, uh, you, you hear in your mind, Narcissus. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you do it. Do a little, do a little tighter. Uh, do a little tighter right there. 
um so i uh, <laughs> uh i i continue uh but as i as i do so i begin to uh fuel his pockets things like that so any kind of weapon or anything that's not just clothing i will actually take off his person uh make an investigation with advantage because he's kind of like a corpse and oh my favorite I just, kind of person <laughs> i just feel like giving <laughs> Hmm. With a nine and a twelve. You know um, what? If that doesn't do it, I might spend my inspiration. <laughs> well, you gotta tell me one. You gotta tell me first. Ah. Uh, you will hear da. Dan's voice in her head go. Would you like some help yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I, I will say that with a twelve, you, you he is not armed. Um. Okay. All right. Now, with with the request for help, fine. Again, we'll walk up and try and investigate him. Okay. Now, let me show you how a pro does it, and with one eye less than you. Remember. Please roll on that one. Please roll on that one. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I, I kind of <laughs> want that to happen too. Oh, he's a reliable he, talent, he, though. So even even with a nat, we yeah, even with a nat <laughs> one, and even in spite of even uh, ignoring reliable talent. Excuse me. I would roll the same as your highest roll. 21. Ooh, 21. <clears throat> yeah, he is uh he's pretty much just wearing the 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 cloak and and then just a basic tunic under it. He he does not seem to have any possessions. He doesn't have a coin purse. Um he doesn't it doesn't he has like a rope belt, but it's kind of frayed and and just in shitty condition. Um he he seems like like if you if you really kind of look at like the the bottom edges of his his cape and everything, it kind of seems like that he's been tending a farm or or animals. I mean, it's it's dirty. It's a little bit kind of unkempt. It's not what you would expect from someone at Candlekeep. But again, you don't really you don't really look at their the bottoms of their robes as they're walking by doing their job. So m maybe it is what you would expect from there. Mm. Um, let's see what Sledge is up to. Um, let's see. Sledge, uh, so telepathically, he knows that they've got someone over there. Um, Sledge is going to continue moving this way, uh, staying somewhat in, in range of where Narcissus is, um, and uh, just kind of exploring to the uh, west here. Okie dokie. Let me get the... Uh... Sorry, let me get the map readjusted here on the camera ship. That's actually why we did this, buddy, was to, <laughs> to literally cause the shift across the biggest <laughs> map you have. <laughs> oh, sorry. Second layer, he's like, forget this, reveal everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh no i would i would never reveal everything uh polygon reveal i got it give me give my character two minutes so that way i make you reveal everything <laughs> <laughs> it's like a xerox we just see him like go yeah boom, boom. see i i like I like just showing the entire map, but then adding the the tokens once they get to that area. So they're like, oh, this is safe. And I'm like, ha ha, no. <laughs> no. It's actually like those old C or T screens when it's like. What what was that that you like to do? Let me keep, go ahead and keep talking about that, Panda. Uh, a reveal <laughs> map. I like to give all my uh, all my uh, players advantage and you know inspiration. <laughs> and like that. And then the you know TPK. <laughs> and you know let them live you know mm. classic stuff <laughs> they they just go on and lead normal lives everywhere it's great they just uh, go on they open up a tavern called the swallow owl you know yes there's a brothel uh, yes. next door you know <laughs> the usual let's see if the inn is the swallow owl what would okay never mind um let's see uh so when i get to hear these two folks the just... red head sorry <laughs> Uh, uh they they most uh, so these two these two folks here just above you um 
uh, mostly they were kind of in a conversation and then you cut around the corner and they're kind of interested in you. Uh, oh, well, my goodness. Uh, more visitors here. First, the merchant. Now, now you specimen of. Hello, how are you? Uh, exquisiteness, uh, magnificence. There's several ways to, I fit into several species. How are you? <laughs> uh, and um, sort of in passing, because he's still, Sledge is still sort of moving towards the West. Um, it's sort of that, you know, hi, how are you? Um, seen any other new visitors other than my uh, uh, self? run by this direction recently and it's sort of one of those huh like a as i'm going by well i mean i guess it depends on how recent recent is uh so uh, maybe but uh we'll see you later i guess uh, uh, are you like yeah. <laughs> all right yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, have it's... to come we'll have to come back to that narcissus yes, you uh continuing yeah. west as well yeah, she's just kind of following on the idea that everything's going to wrap around and just kind of keep going this way. Following this path a bit. Yeah, so you start to see uh, you know, the edge of some, some farming plots here. Really, um, it's that competition between Narcissus and Sledge. You know, it, it's always ongoing. Like, it's like, no, I'll get to the other side first. No, you won't. And <laughs> Look, it's fine when I finish first. It's not fine when you do. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love this so much. <laughs> um, if you had told younger me that this is what D&D &D was about, I would not have believed you. Uh, yeah, I mean, actually open up just a little bit more there. Yeah, you, you see uh, just you know, very neatly tilled and planted uh, fields starting to lay out in front of you there. And which which holds with what you had told about that this is a, a small village that does some farming. Um, but that's that's kind of kind of what's going on just, right here at the moment. Just through the like telepathic bond, all you can start hearing is like like bad puns, like ply me like this field, things like that. And you're all just like, what the? F do you do you realize you're doing it, or are you trying to? Uh... Or is it just happening? Oh, no, these are these are just like the the subconscious, just like seeing a field that's like freshly plowed or tilled or whatever, and she's just like, ah, yes, eh ho, I am home. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Ah, the creative process. She must be writing. Uh... <laughs> uh, all right, we'll cycle back over to the other side of the map that we scroll back, and um, Aerith. So you have you now have someone uh, unconscious and bound. Uh, you yep. and you and Gen have have searched him pretty thoroughly between the two of you. Mostly it was Gen, but um, and, and this fella doesn't doesn't really have anything. It seems like except the clothes on his back and one barrel and um... one barrel. Well, which he's not even holding. So technically, <laughs> that could be y'all's barrel. Yeah, very nice. I <laughs> will. Um... <laughs> Let's see. Uh, how big is this gentleman? Like, could me and Gen carry him? Oh, ab absolutely. I mean, he's uh, you know he's five three, five four, very kind of slight stature. It, it would not be a problem for even one of you to uh, to 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 at least drag him out. You could you could pick him up and get him out. The, the two of you, no problem. I would I would go for his arms, put my my uh, hands underneath him, and look to Gen. Like, on three. Where are we taking him? I don't know, just out of the woods? I don't think he's one of our attackers. I'm just saying that the woods is just ambush central. Hmm. Uh, and again, if we want to, if we want to question him, probably better not to do it here. Uh, Gin and Aerith and Raven make a perception check. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one. Uh, uh oh for Aerith with I'm, that I'm one. I'm hearing Narcissus's plow ho oh, <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, again with a twenty. Too busy, like, you know, staring at your brother. Like, look, we gotta get him out of here. Come on. <laughs> uh, and Raven. Uh, eighteen. 
So Raven and Gen. Notice a, a sound just north of you. Uh, maybe what sounds like some kind of under, under your breath, kind of grumbling about something. Well, it's a good thing I was already going north. <laughs> Let's leave the poor bastard here. I'd rather see what that is. Up north. Okay, so as you, as you... I'm sure unceremoniously drop him and clue Aerith into to something going on up north. Um, it's, Can I it's at a, least tie him to the tree before leaving? Like, do I have enough rope? Um, sure. <laughs> just because just I like that you're tying someone to a tree in a demiplane. Something about that just warms my heart. Um, <laughs> so you're you're tying him to the tree and, and as you... As you do that, the the sound that, that the other two had heard and pointed out to you becomes a little a little louder. Um and it definitely is someone muttering, it's like gosh, goddamn stupid ass kid. How long does it take to go and just get a couple of goddamn kegs of beer and then just bring them back? And he's he stops dead looking at Raven. Raven's up in the trees. So How high yeah, up in the trees? I pretty much run up by like I don't, I don't know how, how all these trees are but if they're like you know 20 30 feet tall i'd probably be getting about the halfway to three quarters of the way up the trees okay then he does not notice you and continues on just a little bit further it, it just, and just I you for one my way toward the sound for uh you are kind of on the cusp of seeing him uh, so i don't know that he has seen you necessarily he will see the broken beer gear, beer keg right. uh before he sees right. you I definitely want to hide. Um, so he's going to get here. Mm. All right. So roll a stealth for me, please. Okay. Or roll a hide. Is there is there a hide one? I think it's just yeah, stealth. It's stealth. 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 Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. You kind of nice. hide with a thirty. Um, mm. With a thirty, you actually hide well enough that you drag Aerith behind a tree with you, and he gets to hear, and the grumbling stops because he sees the broken uh the broken keg and just what what looks like uh just getting his guy just laying there he's like you drunk son of a bitch i cannot believe you went and got a keg and got drunk and then broke it before you got back to us and somehow tied yourself up he has not clocked that yet so i will i will give the three of you a single surprise round on him if you like and then we'll see if he's still alive and need to go into initiative. All right. I jump out from behind the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Do I roll initiative? <laughs> uh, uh, if that's how you want to burn up your surprise round. No, that's, no, no. Uh... I mean, I want to actually hit him, but I don't know how we're going to do it in order. of. I don't know if we need to roll initiative for the surprise um, round at all. No, no, no. I just no. imagine you, you did the Mr. Meeseeks. I'm Simi Six. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> I uh, look at me. I I, I, I was like wait. From yeah, my yeah. So I, I, you guys can do ranged attacks at him simultaneously. Uh, Aerith, you could probably wanna, close to him. Yeah, I want to close in and slash him with my rapier. All right. Uh, so if you have multi attacks, you you will only get one single since this is a surprise round. Um, um, since uh, Absarham was uh, told to help her, uh, would that work in the surprise round, or would that wait till initiative? I'm going to say that needs to wait till initiative. the The trees, are, the trees are still kind of thick. Um, yeah. Uh, would she get? Uh, would she also get advantage since uh, her brother helped hide him? So he, he, she's not uh, known. To oh, because she's attacking. Yes. So it's just, since it's a surprise round, you're attacking from stealth. Uh, roll that with advantage. Yay. Just getting his character sheet open here. 24 to hit. Uh -huh. ah, finally. The Elven accuracy finally comes in clutch. Yeah. Did you tell me the, the, the critical roll that I, I mentioned to you there? Uh, sorry, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, sorry, I, I, just I to help, help your dice rolling. Get, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, yeah. Goodness uh, Gracious mercy. Yes, 24 hits. So please roll, Aerith, please roll your damage. I do want to specify this is non-lethal. 
Copy that. Uh, um, you got a right. knocked out guy back there. And then I just want a collection of knocked out. <laughs> um, and then All am right. I able to use my... Uh, am I able to use a psionic strike as well? Or would that not be... Is that... How, how does a psionic strike work? Is that something that you can just declare at hit, any... If I hit a target with an attack and I deal damage with it, I can then spend a psionic energy dice to deal an additional 1d10 plus 2 damage. Yes, I will I will say that you can absolutely do that. Yeah, that's like a, like a smite or nice. and such. 20. Nice. Uh, so yeah, that is 20 non-lethal damage to him um, as I shoot... Uh, Rapiers, psychic rapiers, not knives, psychic rapiers <laughs> at Let's him. Let's see. And I believe I hit him with 47 psychic damage. Well, it's going to be 42 is your base because maxing out your uh, sneak attack and your weapon, and then you get the roll oh, plus your stat. So it's okay. going to be more. I'm trying. I'm just going to let you do the math on it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll forget him at that momentarily. I'm I'm trying to like you know dissect it apart so as to. Yeah, the the rogue <laughs> damage stuff gets a little bit out of control with the perfect crits on, but that, that's why I, I mentioned the thing. But after he, as I saw him roll a crit, I'm like, crap! I hope Sorry. he has that on. <laughs> uh, but two plus four so one. And while we wait, remember to enter the giveaway, exclamation mark giveaway. If you're not in that, we will draw at the end of the stream for another $15 Kraken Dice gift card. All right. So it looks like if my math is 100% correct, again, just did 65 points of damage on his <laughs> attack. I love it. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Raven, are you uh, going to make an attack or you going to hold on to your... Why not? Geronimo. <laughs> so before we get into this, is this non-lethal? Or do, does Raven care? <laughs> well, I kind of caught a, a, a little little thought crossed my mind. From, it wasn't mine, but it sounded pretty nice. Uh, place with no consequences. Hmm. <laughs> I think this is a real person, guys. I think it this is. is a real person. It is. <laughs> but you remember, stop them, just do it with the amethyst one. You've, you've, all the other real people here are bad guys. But that's why I'm knocking them out to ask them questions for the real big bad guy. No, that's true. Uh, yeah, right. Going, right now I'm going with the no consequences, so <laughs> I might change next turn. When Shea, start the turn. Shay D Man says Raven gonna Raven, and I just I think mm -hmm. that is maybe the truest thing that has been said in chat tonight. All right, so that is a twenty-one to hit. That hits, and not not going too crazy here or anything, because I don't get crazy amounts of extra dice on my uh, my attacks. Not all of them. That is 12 points of magical bludgeoning damage. As I just come drop down and slam with a, with a you know, leg drop. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be your, that, yeah, that'll be your single, your single attack. So yeah, uh, but, gonna... uh, for, for the funness of it. Yeah. Uh, I, I will, I will use a key point. You know, I have a feeling he's probably going to succeed and a uh, stunning strike. Um, what's my save on that? Constitution, which I'm sure he's, he's good at because I know the other guy was good at it. Constitution. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter how good he is when he puts a two on the die. Uh, yeah, so he is stunned, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, everybody uh, who is on this side of the map over here, please roll for initiative for so, as long as it will be. So what's up, Narcissus? How are you doing? We're great. 
I started like telling him about like the fact that I've planned like this whole jig out this evening. <laughs> yes. We're talking about the show. I'm like, yeah, oh, and I can lift you while you're singing. Yes, this could this could work. This could work. Uh who are we still missing? We're still missing Gen Sorry, from the initiative. Issues with the, there we go. Now it's loaded in. I was having issues with my D D on sheet. There we go. All right. Um for uh, for abs or ham, do you um, want me to like? Oh yeah, go ahead and roll in, and and he'll just act on on your turn. Roll in sledge and heard. heard, heard. Gotcha. We'll put you put abs or ham where you are. Gotcha. Let me get that up about that. Burp, 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 burp. Blah. <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, 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 uh oh. <laughs> I, I was half hoping that uh, like Gen was actually going to get the uh, the higher roll of the two of us, even though I have advantage. <laughs> well, I'll make good. I'll make use of a bit of stun that's still left on him then. <laughs> okay. And it's a fourteen and nineteen, so that is. 29 yeah that hits i mean you only cleared it by like 11 so don't get cocky <laughs> uh I, i'm quite observant and kind of notice like pain, that uh eris eyes kind of flared when she noticed that i was trying to you know basically kill the man <laughs> okay so i will try to go non-lethal okay Understood. That's that first damage is nine points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. It was a face of betrayal of, I got yelled at for doing lethal. What's <laughs> up with this? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, it doesn't even need to be a face of it. It can fully just be those thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> that exact oh. thought crosses your mind. <laughs> now do this again. A uh, three and a sixteen on the dice, so twenty-six. That'll do it. Mm -hmm. For ten more points of damage. Uh, he is. I mean, I mean, even though you're going non-lethal, he is rough looking. Mm -hmm. Rough, rough with like two apostrophes. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, and. I'm not going to go flurry or blows, but I still get a third attack because I attacked, I attacked him with my, and uh, not burning, not burning. Oh, 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 anonymous lone, lone ranger ripping off the fingernail still hurts, but it's non-lethal. Yeah. Hey, just because Ouch. I got pliers, I mean, um. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I'm right. consistently dripping one single drop of water onto his head for like seven hours in a row doesn't mean that it's more <laughs> torture, guys. Like, <laughs> uh, again, that's another eight and a 19, so that's 29 again. That'll do it. And that will be 11 points of bludgeoning. You, uh. You just smooth. Like reach down. What what did you hit him with last? Was that was that a punch or was that another staff? Oh, I, I just I pretty much been uh, literally just kicking him back and forth. Just kicking him. He yeah. he he looks you right in the eyes and he looks just a little bit dazed. And you plant one right in his face, and he just lays back, unconscious. So I can, uh, kind of just kicked him right back into uh, Aerith's arm. <laughs> for sure. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and the three of you clock the fact that he didn't have a chance to scream or yell or call you a dirty name. This has been one of the quietest uh, 
takedowns you guys have had maybe ever <laughs> notice sledge is not there uh, <laughs> you know i wasn't gonna bring it up but now that you say that uh i mean given that i literally play music to do a lot of my damage <laughs> I think I see what's happening here. Did, they told you something was over here, didn't they? Because they told me to go this way. No, I'm just... it's like um, Team Elves. Are you going to Team uh, Horn Dog? A team yeah. Horn. Oh my God! Are you guys going to truss him up and drag him over with his friend? Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we'll say that you are doing that, and we'll move back to Sledge, who was making some new friends. Yes. Uh, yeah, I rounded this corner and I uh, put on those uh, brakes. Those Scooby uh, Scooby Doo brakes. <laughs> yes, uh, I was out of frame and then right back in frame. <laughs> um, and uh, so yeah, I will kind of close the gap uh, about to here and you know. Um, so uh, time frames. Um, well, I'd say not right this moment, but. Um, say a couple of hours ago a, a different group of strangers may have come through town hmm couple of hours oh oh whoa yes uh the 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 beer guy i think it, 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 shockers I, I think his name is he seems like a nice guy he, he man he talks weird though shockers um okay okay uh and and uh, that's it. That's the. Yeah, I mean, he's he's just right over there in the marketplace. He set up a little stand. He's he's, I don't know, selling beer from from some somewhere. I don't. I mean, I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why, but well, you know why everybody needs beer around here. It's, it's, shh, it's stop, stop, stop. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, everyone enjoys a good, uh, good beer, but why does everyone need beer around here? And I'll tell you what, he is really pushy with those samples. Is it that good? And the, the man uh, who identifies himself as uh, Josephus. Uh, it's a bunch of damn godsleth heathens around here just drinking and cavorting all the time. And that sin hole right there. And he, you notice he points over uh, Sledge to, to this building here. One that you saw Narcissus at earlier. So it checks out that it's a, a, <laughs> a, a, a sin hole. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not an, not enough to to do your job and to to build beautiful things and then just pray. Gotta go have uh, gotta go have some some drinks. I just now now Josephus uh, Henrietta, let me finish. And they actually kind of like turn in and start quibbling a little bit, kind of forgetting that you are there. Mostly they, uh -huh. they seem to be quibbling about this. Sometimes folks just want to have a drink. Well, no, anybody that has a drink is, you know, very staunch uh, kind of feelings about things. Okay. And so I get this feeling between the two that uh, anything of sort of uh, maybe what they consider ill repute would be where Narcissus was hanging out. Um, and, uh, that the only new person that they have seen recently was, uh, this guy, um, within the last couple of hours. Yes. That was what you had clarified down to. Uh, yes. And, uh, just hitting on that in Sledge's brain, sometimes, you know, the, the run, you know, takes it out of you. Uh, you maybe a couple hours, uh, aside from, uh, that wonderful ale salesman. Uh, has there been uh, any other uh, adventuring groups or or anything like that uh, last couple of days or weeks um, coming through town? Well, a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I guess that's about when Rene showed up and he... Uh... I don't know. He's he's kind of a strange fella, though. I I will say he did he did make things a little less uh, a little less vibrant at the at the old tavern sin hole over there. Renee, um, 
and telepathically i will uh send that out to the group um they spoke of a, a renee does that name ring a bell and uh out loud i will say um so he was against the uh, sin hole as you call it did he shut it well, down or uh, i don't know or that try he's, to i don't know that he's necessarily against it but he uh he seems to have 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 made off with one of their bigger attractions uh so I, I that that at least has has tamed things a little bit. Oh, attractions you say? Uh, like like sh shows or artifacts? What what kind of attraction was this? <sighs> that silly knave that showed up here like a year or so ago now. This quill. He would come down at all hours of the night here at the bar and sing with everybody and tell just the. the putrid stories and now uh, Josephus just uh, uh, now, Henrietta I, I thought those stories were goddamn awful it, and they they again kind of in a hushed bicker back and forth uh, 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 but uh, Renee started hanging out with Quill and the more they hung out the less the less Quill came down here and got everybody all roused up oh oh well that is that is interesting and uh uh, this Rene, did he have a place where he's uh, a set up or, or, or here in town, um, a house or an inn, perhaps? Well, I surely don't know, but uh, it's not like travelers, especially of of that type, ever have any any kind of real. It's Josephus, enough. I uh, I I do not know. He's 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 being kind of shitty now because he's been admonished by Henrietta a number of times. Uh, so to the group, uh, I will uh, communicate that um, uh, Quill was here uh, near the uh, west side of town, uh, but apparently this Renee person has uh, taken him from here. Um, and also, time passes very differently here, um, and. Uh, Outwardly, I'll say, well, uh, thank you. Um, amazing. And I'll make sure to uh, avoid that uh, sin hole over there. Um, uh, and uh, I will begin uh, continuing towards uh, Narcissus, actually trying to uh, meet up with her. Um, I love that every time you say her name, it's different, and it's like it's know, not even it's not even a character choice. That's a player yeah. choice, and that's why I love it even more. Enjoy uh, the the many words or names. Uh, so, after hearing that, uh, Aerith will also uh, relay what they had just you know the combat that they had just had, how they have two people, and they're probably bringing them into town. Um, but she is going to ask whether. Uh, by the timing even differently, whether you meant faster or slower? Uh, oh, um, when I asked if anyone had arrived within the last hour, I was told just the ales salesman. When I said the last couple of days or weeks, they then mentioned this uh, Renee character. Uh, but that was only, what, maybe two, three hours from when they came into the, to the book? Uh, and then they said a year ago, this Quill character um, was here. So I, I get the feeling time moves uh, much faster here. An hour in our place is more like a, a week uh, here, something like that. Um, should we all... Uh, is there somewhere centrally we want to, or, or should we leave these captors in the wood? Should should we come that way towards you? Uh, speaking, of course, um, to the rest of the group there. I do not think that it would be wise to bring them out into the town. The people here they seem a bit uh, suspicious. They catch on to everything, even with some of my talents. They were. They easily noticed that there was not one of them. Any, I mean, any, any, res okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I was thinking, I was like, um, 
No, no, no if... thinking. Just react. Just react. Just react. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think if there was any clearing um, that we could potentially take them to, but then I re remember the only place that I can really recall had that one woman sat there. So yeah, probably them coming out to us might be... How about... Uh, so I'll, I'll relate to them to meet at the edge of the forest. Okay. So it's it's in it's in it's in the shelter of the forest, but it's also we can also leave quickly, uh, if needs be. All right. The uh, as, as you all make that plan and start moving in that direction, the um, on the the party chat that uh, I'm going to actually get back up in the trees and go a bit further to see where this guy was waiting at in case the others are there. So I'm just going to get up in the trees and sneak sneak away back that way. Uh, okay. okay. Sure. So, so I go back up in the trees and, and be back to my sneaky self. All right, give me just a second there. Tell me, no uh, tell me which way you want to head. Just kind of Let's due go. north of where you are, or well, or? so yeah, because I saw him come from about, you know, about here ish. Mm hmm. So I intend to, you know, you know, be all ninja like and sneak up there to see in case if uh you know if the others are there or if it was just. You know, these two out here, while the others were uh, perhaps doing something in town. And just let me know if you need me to actually roll roll stealth or not. Uh, yeah, why don't you roll stealth for me, if you would? That'll give me a chance okay. to redraw this polygon reveal. <laughs> no problem. That is an 18 on the die, so 31. Uh, yeah, you you get back up there smooth, and um, you're you're just just above like a whisper, like a leaf on the wind, um, and um, yeah, you uh, you go you move a little bit up, and you don't specifically see. Um, I will say stepping out of uh, stepping out of the play for just a moment that mm -hmm. when we get here. Uh, which should be pinging on your map. We yeah. are we are reaching the confines of the drawn map. So to continue in that way, we will we'll do a kind of swap around. We'll have to move. So if you decide that you want to kind of continue in this vein, we'll know that, just know that we'll have to reset on the map a little bit. But that's not a problem. I just want to let you know that that's a a thing. Well, if it looks like he was kind of like you know hunkered down like right about here ish or so, like but I'm just. Then I'll be content. You know, all right. This is where they were. He or they were. You know. At. Yeah. I mean, so you notice that there there are a couple of little kind of clearing spots that mm -hmm. uh, that they could have been, uh, you know, like have it set up like a cold camp set up or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't the rest of you drag yourselves to where you want to meet at the edge of the forest, and I will drag your tied up people with. Um, while all of this is occurring, the the sky as it had done before just turns into the inky black and the massive thunderclouds just roll in it blankets the entirety of the sky and just the the lightning is it's almost too dark to see and the lightning flash and it's bright as daylight and you hear the thunder again no rain from it uh there's no wind um but uh but yeah, that that is that is taking place again. Uh, as we, um, uh, as we meet up uh, here on the edge, both these uh, uh, guys are tied up and unconscious currently. Correct. Correct. Are they are they separate or have you tied them together? Uh separate, I believe. Okay. Um okay, so uh I here um with these guys, I'll still stay on the telepathic uh bond. Um unless uh how long do you think it's been? Uh just to check in on that. Let's say we're probably at like 45 or 50 minutes so there's a little bit of time left on it um but uh but not a not a ton i mean you could always recast it but no uh so 
telepathically, I'll just tell the group once again that, um, yeah, it, I think that this Renee character is, is Soren and has somehow tempted Quill, although the townsfolk I spoke to didn't know where. Um, obviously, they're out in these woods somewhere. Last time we tried to question these guys, it uh, it didn't uh, work out so well. Um, do we have any different strategies we might uh, want to employ uh, on these gentlemen? I mean, I imagine... What if we played kind of good cop and I imagine they would want to break out of here? If we could maybe offer them a way out. We don't know a way out, but if we can offer it. They might be more willing to give information. Maybe the the uh, custodian, um, since I don't know what what their involvement is in this. Um, I don't know. That might be a good uh, possibility. Um, and I suppose the next follow up is: What information exactly do we want to gain from them? Um, obviously, the location of of where they're going and and things like that. But is there anything else useful we can think of before we we wake them up and start this? I assume you searched the bodies. Did you find any more of the upper coins? Uh, we searched one. Uh, brother, would you help me search this gentleman? All right, you me. So you, one of you can roll with an advantage, or you can both roll singularly. Uh, it's up to you. You you roll with advantage again. <laughs> <laughs> with advantage, sorry, I forgot to include that. I already clicked. That's all right. That's okay because <laughs> they're they're both twenty ones. Uh, yeah. So he he is dressed very similarly to uh, ones that you fought in Candlekeep. He is armed with a scimitar. Um, he has you know six gold on him. Uh, he, you know, tucked in kind of under his, uh, under his armor, he has one of those silver, what you now know are Harper badges, um, uh, you know, on his, his kind of under tunic. Uh, and he has three of those nondescript plain red, what we're calling the red coins for now. Ah, uh, another one of our rogue Harpers. Hmm. Perhaps he can tell us where Soren went. That's my hope, at least. I think it would be very important to make sure this one does not escape. Perhaps if we are to uh, wake them up, myself or Sledge could... Uh, Use some sort of magic to keep them pliant. Sledge will look at you and he'll... Though I can bend things, you are much better with bending the will of people. And he, he says it very like... Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and as the most charismatic narcissist you probably should lead this that may be true but I'm I'm not very good at thinking of the words so what questions would we like to know don't worry we're on the bond so we'll just help you through this uh, as we you yeah. sons of bitches oh, I love it I love it I'm so mad but I love it <laughs> you got uh, you're on the clock you got 10 minutes <laughs> we have multiple hours on gen's switchboard that's true do you want me to turn that on well, you, it's still on for, for for the majority of us still oh that's you, true you rolled yeah, like six true. seven hours on it last time yeah i rolled six hours on it so, it so it's only been a few like three of us three hours or something yeah, so yeah, probably nearing like uh, two and a half hours into it, maybe. Yeah, you're almost at an hour for uh, for sledges, and then you had an an hour plus for a short rest. So yeah, you're probably two and a half hours into the original uh, 
psychic telepathy that you had rolled. Good, good call on that. I had forgotten. Got you covered. <laughs> Um, are you going to rejoin the, uh, the group Raven? Or are you still kind of freelancing up in the forest? Well, I kind of gave you a, a, I wrote into the, into our chat. So as to, you know, not, uh, bog things too much. I was kind of like going to go check out those two spots that you had mentioned with gotcha, myself. Gotcha. Gotcha. And if, it, if they look vacant, then I was going to pretty much like just continue arcing around back towards the group, maintaining my stealth all the way back. For sure. Yeah, they are, um... They're they're definitely vacant, but you can this one the in the the south, the mm -hmm. kind of for the first time you see some dirt disturbed. So you imagine that the the guy that walked up on you who was grumbling had been mm -hmm. kind of sitting there and and waiting for the other guy to come back. So, uh, the other two though seem seem pretty just kind of barren and un un unmessed with. Yeah, because if I kind of do like that over there, and then you know swing back through here to come back to the group. Sure, I'll I'll get you some opening up. Mm -hmm. Um, what uh, what are you guys gonna? You're gonna have to wake up one of the quarries to question them. Mm -hmm. And so you have to do slap them. <laughs> well, Narcissus uh, is actually gonna take a little inspiration from our DM and uh, straddle the one that um. Has the Harper coin? Uh, okay, he's still gonna need at least one point of healing to uh, reawaken. <laughs> I mean, so if he leaves yeah, in, did, I'm not gonna go there. Just know that I had something that was awful, and I'm not gonna say it. So just know that I that I I, I thought that. <laughs> he's gonna lean in and um, just whisper in his ear wake up and it's gonna be healing word oh okay first level just so he gets a little bit but not but it's 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 a uh, um a sensual wake up right not not uh, Mama me, we need you to wake up that see now that uh. a second there i thought she was trying she was kind of doing the uh the asmr thing with like the yeah. people making out with the ears yeah, straight up. <laughs> <laughs> she reaches up and starts crinkling leaves in his ear. So uh, he's healed for six points. Dang. Awesome. And he <laughs> he he kind of like, mm, oh, did that beer show up? What's going on? And then he opens his eyes and sees you, a Narcissus, straddling him. And then all the rest of you around uh weapons drawn and ready and he realizes he is bound and then he just he just swallows really hard and just and then just waits are you going to help us ah uh, well i guess that depends on what you need help with well, first off, I need help with a little bit of information, and then you could help me with a little bit of fun. Uh, we're just right here in front of everybody? Uh, I'm a bad. I'm used to putting on a show. I walk away angrily. <laughs> <laughs> Sledge starts looking for, like, a, a comfortable spot to sit. You know, he, you know... Uh, Absraham, come here, come here. All right, and continue, continue. This is amazing. <laughs> I walk around somewhere behind him and uh, take a seat, but I, I want to observe and see if he's lying to us at any point. Okay. Where we'll do, does Aerith walk off to? <laughs> you'll do that with the uh, stare into his soul mechanic, or you're just you're you're waiting to do an insight. No, uh, I'll just I'll use insight uh, whenever he answers something. But I okay. actually have a ring that helps me with that, so I'll have advantage. Okay. Uh, uh, well, I, I'm not so sure about the first part. The second part sounds pretty good, so I, I hope that what you want to know is something that I can tell you. Uh, we're looking for someone called, uh, Renee? Uh, that I don't think I know. I don't, I don't believe I know anyone named Renee. What is your name? What? Well, it, it's a, it's. I've got a name. This is a good one. It's 
not one that Buddy came up with, but just know it's a really good one. It's something I've that I have not yet learned. Is it perhaps in, Buddy? Yes. In in all of the time that I've been DMing, I don't normally give names to fodder, but I always have players who capture and want to question them, and they always start with, "What's your name?" Like they're playing Whoa. good good cop bad cop. <laughs> It's like you'd think that I would have learned after all Whoa. these years it's to more give she's everybody a damn name. Not, it's more she's checking he's not Quill or Renee by asking. I see, Renee. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm not either of them. I uh, see that you find yourself to be a hopper. That is uh, quite a dangerous job. Well, uh, it, he, he goes from the kind of hoping and playful into a into a much more straightforward and kind of serious tone <clears throat> yeah, yes the the job that we do is is necessary to prevent to prevent corruption to prevent things from getting out of hand places we we have to do an unenviable and unfortunate tasks to keep everyone safe i just find that so admirable perhaps um do you have any other friends around here? You could maybe help us. You see, we are looking for a very naughty boy. We have come from Candlekeep. Oh, the minute you say that, his body stiffens. You know, I, I like it when they stiffen, but I don't like it like this. I I'm afraid that we might be we might be at an impasse. Do you know what these little red coins are? Yes. Would you tell me? No. What if I start hurting your friend? And I pull a blade to the other gentleman who is still unconscious. Where do you put the blade? To his neck. If you go just a little bit higher with the point, it'll be much faster for him. And Maybe then he, he and then he, and then he will fast. look, he will look right back dead into Narcissus's face. As I said, unenviable things to keep the most people safe. I don't think she wants to uh, make it. A fast one. You see, we were also sent here by a hopper. Oh. Yes. You see, we know about the demi planes. We know that is where we are right now. Telepathically, uh, Sledge will throw over there. Uh, we haven't told him which Harper sent us. Uh, maybe tell him that uh, we haven't mentioned Soren either. Maybe tell him. We're a backup plan from Soren, uh, sent afterwards. I don't know. I'm trying to think. That Candlekeep thing, uh, he didn't like that. You see, we were there when everything started to go badly with the invasion of Candlekeep. Yes, of course, it was just meant to be a destruction in order to get the book. But Soren's party did not walk away with the book. I know they came in here, but they left it there. It was a danger. Whoever knows who could find it. So we were sent to collect it. To bring it somewhere safe. Roll a deception. I'm loving this. Roll a deception. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> That's a 31. That'll do. That do. <laughs> I, I I'm only looking like that because I'm trying to decide what to do because I actually rolled a kraken, <gasps> but it's a skill check and you can't technically critically succeed or fail on a skill check. So it comes down to the numbers. It really comes down to the numbers. Um, what I will say is this: is that you. You definitely bamboozle him. I don't know that he fully believes you, but he doesn't he doesn't call you a damn liar to your face. Uh 
well of of course the book was was left you you can't bring the door inside the house no you but you can't sent... take the door outside of the castle which is what we did you know time works different in the demi planes you guys are taking a little bit too long so we were sent in as backup he, after we brought a book somewhere safe from Candlekeep. He's he's looking down and around, and you can you can tell he's trying to he's trying to process it. He's trying to to add the numbers to the shapes, and they're she, they're fighting she takes themselves. Out, she takes out one of the red uh, coins that they'd picked up from um, the bodies they looted, as well as one of the harbor coins. I do not wish to fight my friends. I, I, yeah, ab absolutely. He, he, he definitely has a, a confused tone about him. Uh, uh, mentally, Narcissus is panicking and just going, oh God, oh God, what, what, quick, what else do we need to know? I, I, I'm struggling. <laughs> we need to find out where, uh, the people in power are so we can, Bring them with a book. Perhaps and... you uh, take us to Sohan and he can clear this up. Oh, is is uh, Soren the head of the snake? I mean, he's he's in the he's he's at the camp. Do you, uh, yeah, yeah. He's he's here. He's 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 at he's at our camp, but I. How do you how how do you not how do you know that we haven't gotten things done? I, oh shit, are we in are we in trouble? Oh man, I, I put my hands up, but I know he can't because he's bound. But this is kind of kind of where he, <laughs> where, he where he is is now he's fretting about what's going to happen to them if if his ass is in a sling now or or what? We'll be fine. This is why we must make haste. It's also why I had no time to waste. Take us there. And she'll put, she'll sheath her weapon. And we'll also make it a point to be playing with her coins in her hand as well, the red coins that she has. No, mm -hmm. so this is will lean in and say, we can still have that fun later, but first. Do you work, yes? Aerith, make a deception check. Oh no. Oh no. Can I assist on that, given that I've done all this groundwork? No, but I am gonna make. And I this... have percent, and I have. Uh, I've... I am. I am gonna. Oh, uh, not twenty, oh. anyways. <laughs> oh, remember that you can't critically <laughs> succeed or fail, which is super good because you rolled a twenty and I rolled a one. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you, uh, you, you for sure, you, uh, you like pull one of those coins out and like. Do the I mean, thing I have you, like ten of these coins. You like so I don't flip, know flip it, or, flip it across your knuckles back and forth, that kind of thing. And he is, he's confused, but but he is definitely like less, uh, less resistant, if that makes any sense. So he he's not, he's not struggling against it as hard mentally, uh, but he still is a little bit bamboozled. Plus, I imagine he wants to believe we're on his side because if we are then Narcissus would want to have a good time with him later. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to let you in on the subtext of, uh, <laughs> of, of Mr. Goodname, but, uh, that's, that's his name now. Mr. Goodname. Leon Goodname. I, I love that even better. Name. Leon. Goodname. <laughs> Show player permission. C save and now now he is leon goodname uh you're not supposed to name them no <laughs> uh, you better you know hope more plot armor <laughs> you better now we're attached to him oh you, you better hope you kill him recurring villain <laughs> who is that in the distance leon uh <laughs> well, don't worry uh 
I'm being paid to uh, dispatch a Soren and his crew. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, and and so he. Are you still sitting straddle of him on the ground? Uh, no, I would, I would, I would lean in, say that bit about uh, having the good time later, but work first, and then stand up, and then help him up and untie him. Yeah, it, when when you stand him up and untie him, he makes no no move to like bolt or or run or anything. Um. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we're we're not too. He kind of like looks around. We're not really super far from. From uh. From the camp here. Um, this idiot, and she begins untying the other unconscious person, dropped one of the barrels that I imagine you're taking back. So <sighs> we can collect that on the way. Yeah, I, I mean. He's kind of an idiot. Technically, we were both sent out to get provisions, and and I just didn't want to, so I sent him on ahead. But he's uh, he's just he's a dopey ass kid. I mean, you know how it is. If I had gone with him, it we probably would have had all the beer. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, and so he begins to lead you, um kind of back to to where you were hold on i just have to do a couple of quick map things here if you're enjoying the stream uh remember that we're doing the giveaway for a 15 dollars cracking gift card uh exclamation mark giveaway and uh we'll do that at the end of the stream and honestly even if you're not enjoying the stream you should still totally enter <laughs> but if you are enjoying the stream which why aren't you <laughs> if you're still here you obviously are join the discord follow the youtube and follow the Twitter. All of the follows. Oh, we're just getting raided by yeah. Top Down Tabletop. Uh. Woo. Awesome. Top Down Tabletop. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, we are doing a giveaway. Do exclamation mark giveaway. We're doing a $15 Kraken Dice uh, web store uh, gift credit at the end of our stream tonight. So come on in. We're running some Candle Keep Mysteries. Uh... The group has just successfully captured and semi-seduced, semi bs their way uh, into uh, the heart of one of the captives, and uh, things may be about to pop off here. So we shall we shall see. All right. Sorry again with this map being the size that it is, even on my computer, it runs a little, a little slow. Is uh is the 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 custodian? Have you revived him at all, or is he still unconscious? I untied him. I, I have no healing abilities. I've just untied him. No, okay. this is not interested in him. <laughs> so no, no, he is uh, he is untied and slouching. Is uh, is someone gonna carry or drag him, or are you just gonna leave him there? I have no preference either way. He has okay. no name. He's not I worth carrying. <laughs> He is no said, Leon. My vote is, is leave him there because I haven't seen any wolves. He is not Leon good name. <laughs> um, uh, moments later. By the way, the uh, Sauron, he was that guy back there. All right, anyway. Uh... <laughs> so I just want to point out it's Sauron, not Sauron. That is a copyrighted property that we don't own Sorin. copyright to. No. <laughs> In, he can't even get my name right. Body. Like, what makes you think he's gonna get? Them? That's Come true. Come on now, expectations. Expectations. Lower them. Let's go. You know. <laughs> Look, All right, if so, it's not about working out, I'm not here for it. Yeah. He uh, he starts leading you guys back into the forest. As you get a, a little bit of ways, and he notices that the guy in the red cloak is still just laying on the ground at the forest edge. He he looks at him and then he goes. And then just continues walking. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So if you guys want to follow up up here, I I have moved him. You see. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. So you came through to make sure that that the book was here. I I don't under. I'm still a little bit out on that. No, we took the book out of Candlekeep where there were 
there were some people who were searching for it as well. Um, so we took it out of Candlekeep and we brought it back to base. And then it had been so long. I do believe that time passes quite differently in here to us there. So we were sent in to make sure that you all were doing fine, given the lengths of time that it had been since the attack. Many a ten day has passed. Wow. I, 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 yeah, I knew the, the time compression displacion. I knew the time was really weird in here, but, uh, uh, yeah, that's, that is wild. Um, do you want to, uh, do you want to, to mention that out, Raven, for the... Uh, for for, the for those playing at home, uh, Raven has been stuffily hidden up in the trees for a while now. And once the group got a little bit away, she came down from her perch and dispatched of the Red Cloak custodian, chucked him a bit further in the woods, and then re-went back up into the trees to sneak behind the party since they weren't moving too fast. That's so Raven. I had to. <laughs> I, I had to. Uh, I mean, hey, we're we're. I'm on a job here. We've been paid to pretty much get rid of these people. So, uh, sledge sees nothing. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. So yeah. You. Uh, well, back to him. Yeah. You guys. Just, you were. You were pretty close. Was come back up, and he comes to that first clearing where he'd been sitting. Uh, you know, I just, I thought I'd hang out here and just have a quick, uh, you know, quick little cat nap while he, uh, you know, while he went and got the stuff uh, and you guys reclaim the other cask of small cask of beer that is still intact. And, you know, I mean, it's what it's, he's a dumbass kid, but he can carry two casks of beer. I thought it's apparently not. He's kind of just like stream of conscious, uh, talking as you guys go. Um, Narcissus is pretending to just like listen to his every word just like he makes a joke if she could let that just a little giggle you know not over the top but also very much like you've got all my attention Aerith angrily walks (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say and then after I got done dispatching the body and sneaking behind I will make a uh, mention through our, uh, our little psychic uh, phone calls that we got going on. And uh, the spot up ahead that he's leading you to is currently empty from when I checked it. I mean, so their group is probably somewhere in town at the moment, if I had to take a guess. Uh, Narcissus thinks back. Well, if he's of no use to us for information, then you can get rid of him. He is quite boring. Man, I so wish he had uh, he had ears Bruno. on the ears on the ch- on the I, chat, but uh, can I just be like right behind him, like knife ready, just waiting, just waiting for the uh, moment? I I am into it, man. And uh, Aerith gets a uh, you know mental image of a thumbs up. You know, go a ahead. Thumb emoji through telepathy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like like I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Right. Knowing that he's like only just about got some health back, I'm just gonna shove it inside and then up, just like into the lo- the lower back, up inside. We're, oh, we're killing him now? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> oh yeah, I think. I thought so. she was pegging him. Sorry. Uh, oh yeah, that as well. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I was I was moving something out of my way on the GM layer, and then I come back and he's being stabbed. Uh, this, is, this is giving him too much attention. Uh, oh, all right. Oh. Yeah, let's let's get let's get to it. Uh, if uh, it, I'm going to say that he you're behind him, he's not expecting it. So I would say just roll the damage on it because you're going to hit him. If you're if you're dispatching him, then he let's... only has six HP left. So, yeah. Well, that's uh. That's more damn. That's nearly double that. So there we go. Well, that's over double that actually. Uh, yeah. He uh, he's just kind of running at the mouth. Oh yeah, and, and 
you know, we, we thought we'd come down and, and, and get a little something. Oh! And you just right up in through the, what was it you said? Through the back of the rib cage and up to just his lower neck. Lower back, lower back. And then just like, as it's in, turn it upwards. So it's like going up the torso. She just leans in and just says, now shut the fuck up. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, finally, I can think again. Serge is like, so Leon, what? Leon? Leon? <laughs> and, and, and just, said my just, pecs just look nice. blood just, it just trickles out of his mouth. And then he hits the ground. And Leon Goodname, as soon as he became, is no longer. Was he wearing a red shirt? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I have to refresh my roll 20 here. What, uh, all right, what do you guys want to get into now? <laughs> Very dramatically <laughs> done, sister. Thank you, thank you. Mm. In a bit of a mood, are we? It's a little bit. I'm sure it'll clear up. <sighs> Well, uh, some, now we have an outfit to wear. Somebody to put down to be. Uh, mm. Oh, let's just, time. <laughs> let's yeah. just hope that somebody has mending to uh, deal with the giant cut mark that's in the back of his outfit. <laughs> Pretty sure two of us have it. Okay. I'm... Uh, Dude, we I'm also have a prestidigitation to get rid of that blood. <laughs> you guys are right up. You're a party after my own heart. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so you have uh, you you have dispatched the the custodian from Candlekeep. You have uh, unceremoniously dispatched Leon Goodname and taken his clothes from him. So not only does he have no equipment, but you've taken all of his clothes. So he lies dead and basically naked. In the forest of a demiplane? It was small anyways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Where do where you guys want to come back to? Uh, well, uh, and Raven, you said this uh, clearing that he was kind of bringing us to was empty, correct? Uh, you just checked that out. Yeah, she, she had went around and checked a couple of these clearings. And this one right here where we're at at the moment was where he was uh, last hunkered down. And so nobody was seen in any of these areas. So I came back to the party. Okay. And now uh, one thing before, uh, did we get any definitiveness on where exactly they, they uh, were um, be before Leon met his fate? <laughs> Didn't, I'm pretty sure Raven told us where the camp was. Yeah, the, this was the this was where they were camping at, at least what he was last noted at. So they only recently just kind of set it up not that long ago. So trying to get situated and get provisions. So, you know, grunts were getting provisions while the brains were out, you know, finding stuff, I'm going to guess. Uh, any of the rest of you any good at... Uh changing your face, because I do not really feel like turning into him. The inane babble I would have to put out. Huh? <laughs> Perhaps, Ledger, are you any good at it? I think that you would be good for speaking like that. When you, you asked that question, I meant to ask, is, is that an illusion that you're doing, or is that something else? Oh, uh, you would have seen when we were in the town. Because um, I noticed you were doing this Back when you met everybody, and then in town, we slowly mimicked everybody in the town. Ah, uh, yes, but Riala has such a pretty voice. Why could I not pretend to be her just for a moment to freak her out? Um, I am... Um, so I have many faces. Uh, is, your, can... is your name Chael? <laughs> I am not a mimic, <laughs> and I am not a mime. It's Buddy, a mime. I believe that's called Did Chow. You? Chow, I'm sorry, Chow. Chow. My name's not Chow. Um, 
there I, I can be your wildest desire. That's, it is quite handy in my profession to be able to uh, change your appearance. And her face will flash back to what it was originally when you first met her. Losing all the changes that she kind of like piecemealed together from the market. Just kind of message Gen on Gen's switchboard radio. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's, so at, at this point, Sledge, your <laughs> your um, telepathic bond has fallen off, but uh, Gen's telepathy switchboard is still connected to some of you. Mm-hmm. I guess it, it maybe all go. of you except for Aerith? All of them except for his sister, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, that's somehow on brand. Hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, as, Just as the, the private group chat without the sibling. <laughs> uh, uh, as the as the bond lets go, it's uh, it lets go with a see you later, bro. <laughs> That's how you know when it's over. You can also immediately as once it drops, Narcissus like thoughts completely change. So thank she's like oh thank fuck they can't hear me anymore. Not realizing that she can still that gang can still hear what she's linking if he wants. <laughs> he doesn't. And he is, doesn't tell her. He's on. She's unfortunately thinking very dirty things about his sister. He tells her. <laughs> you just see her go bright red in the face. Like literally, her entire red looks like a tomato, and it like then her entire body is suddenly red. You're just like it becomes a fire Donasi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is my origin story. <laughs> uh, do, does anybody else, uh, Sledge or or Aerith or Raven, do you clock that that she suddenly <laughs> is like, Ooh, and then is beat red? Oh, I've been clocking this since the beginning. <laughs> so yeah, so you probably would for sure see that she suddenly is is uh is like a tomato, as she says. <laughs> Again, again, just sighs and messages telepathically. It's all right. That's not the first time that's happened. You had to ask me about the manacles. <laughs> all right, moving the story back along. The <laughs> the uh, the galloping you had heard earlier, just thunderous gallops, 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 and it is. It, it is loud and it is ever present and you can you can feel your heart beating faster as it sounds like the hooves are getting faster and faster but this just the this noise of horses galloping just all around you and and no direction right like literally just it's it's it seems to be from all directions um as as cliche as that sounds it it seems like you're in the middle of it but you can look around and obviously you're not <clears throat> uh <clears throat> if i move a little bit more towards the uh west here towards the edge of of the trees is there is there anything in this little uh little clearing section well i don't know you'll have to go into it and find out well, I will go to the edge and abs or ham um, will fly out a little bit. No, scissors will just like look around, realize that nobody else can do it and go, dang it, I did not wish to pretend this silly little man. And <laughs> yes, that was the that was Sledge's answer to your question. Uh, abs or ham, and he walks off. <laughs> just like starts like just like stripping off angrily, just like ah, and pulling on Leon's clothes, and then suddenly just shape change into Leon. Okay, very nice. And I take everything off of his body, put it into the same pockets on mine, and I pick up the thing of beer. Uh, okay. Sledge, make a perception check 
with Absraham. Ah, uh, yes. And remember that Absraham has advantage on perception checks that deal with sight or sound. So make a perception check with advantage with Absraham. Uh, boom. Absraham hey. with a 19... Even uh, with like the 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 horse galloping noise, here's something kind of over here that is decidedly not that horse noise. Um. So to Aerith verbally, I'm going to say um, Abzerham notices something. Uh, a little bit further this way, and I'll point off in, in that direction. Uh, while at the same time, mentally speaking to Gen, and I say the same exact words, uh, and they happen simultaneously. <laughs> okay. Um, and I, Sledge, will carefully start moving around the, the uh, clearing here, and I will send Absarham uh, towards, towards the noise. So now you have to make a decision with Absraham. Do you want to send him? I imagine he's been flying kind of in the, you know, 15, 20 ish foot range where you guys can all see together. Do you want to continue to send him at that height? Or do you want to bring him a little higher, which may mean that he sees a little less, but could be less dangerous to him? Or I could just be pulling your leg. You know. <laughs> uh, oh my so... goodness. Initiative League uh, just raided with a party of five. Thank you so much. We nice. have a, a giveaway going. We're, uh, we're, we're getting super close to the end of the stream here. But we are doing a giveaway. Use exclamation mark giveaway to be entered into a $15 uh, a drawing for a $15 gift card for crackandice.com. I'm sorry. Go ahead, uh... Sledge. So uh, I will, uh, when I get to, yes, about here, I will communicate to uh, Abzerham to kind of do a, uh, like an aerial uh, of that area where he kind of heard the noise coming from. So that would be a little bit up above. Um, I'm pretty sure he'll get out of that 100 feet. So uh, kind of the direction I'll give is, you know, scout the area if you see anything, um, that we've been looking for out of the ordinary, you know, come right back. Um, those sort of directions. Okay. So then w what we'll do is we'll, we're going to let him fly up and he'll go out of range and yeah. he'll scout some. And when he gets back in range, I will reveal to you what he has seen. What is the rest of the party up to? So Narcissus has just changed, put on the clothes and changed face to look like Leon Goodname. Um, I assume Raven is still stealthing through the trees, through the kind of lower branches, but out of sight. Mm -hmm. I'm sticking close to the, uh, to the squishy wizard. Okay. Um, and, uh, but also trying to stealth as well. What? what, squ what squ squishy? I mean... In HP, you know. not muscle. You're oh, fine okay. with muscle. Right. You could deflect bullets with that, but we're not using bullets here. <laughs> okay, all right. Appreciated. Uh, I need it. What is a bullet? <laughs> it's what you throw with a sling. It's it's what comes out of these guns. Um, <laughs> no, <see. laughs> oh man, just my punishment never ends. Uh, you love it. I do. I, I actually love it. The so. pun ishment. There it is. Yes. Now mm, I love it less. Right here. <laughs> now I love it less. Uh all right, so how about you, Gen? Are you uh, are you staying back with uh, Stealthing Raven and Narcissus Good Name, or are you uh, moving up? Uh, or I'll move up. I'll move up, but I will try and stay in stealth regardless. Uh, all right, it's it's not uh, it's not too hard to stay in stealth. I mean, right now you're in the forest with pretty much your party and a dead body, so uh -huh. pretty yep. pretty easy to stay stealth uh, when the bar is that low always happens that I'm in a forest with a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say that... Uh, Not one, but two. Uh, Abstraham <laughs> uh, circles back around and 
We're going to say that he's kind of circles back around this way. And man, when he, when he comes into range, he's, he's, he's pinging at you. And he's like, he's like, he's like, I don't, I, there's, I don't know what it is. There's something, there's something, there's something. And when you see what he, uh, was looking at it, um, I'm getting the reveal going. That's why I'm slow playing it. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not being dramatic. Uh, when, you see, when, you, when you see what he was looking at, it it damn sure looks like there are some people down there. They're uh, not as clear as they are on the map, but I don't really have a half fog. So um, use your imagination. So, wait, what? <laughs> um, so yeah, as Abzerham comes back um, and you know, kind of uh, pushes this image to to Sledge. He'll uh, kind of put up a hand to to Aerith real quick and be like, uh, "It uh, it appears there's about three people in front of us um, that Abzerham noticed. Um, I don't know exactly what they're up to, but but I I think they're part of uh, the group we're looking for. Um, and uh, to Gan, uh, could you could you relay to uh, Leon a good name that uh, we might need that deception skill here pretty soon? Um, and he'll Sledge will kind of stay right there, feeling very comfortable with all of uh, his spotter buddies right there. <laughs> mm. Right, and he'll uh, message to Narcissus. Um, People ahead, we might need your disguise. <sighs> now, get your most banal conversations ready. <laughs> Fun. Leon will live on forever. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> he really is just a silly boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's the are you gonna you gonna approach as as Leon? Yeah. And <laughs> Aerith, are you trying to stealth in that close? Um I will probably get to about uh thirty feet away from them. Um and then we'll and then we'll wait. Uh if you go she, all yeah. if you go as close as thirty feet, I'm gonna make you roll stealth at disadvantage. You could you could roll oh. stealth normal here. But I mean, they are. What about forty? What about thirty-five feet? I'll say you're already within thirty because the uh, the measuring tool is measuring in ten-foot increments. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. as far as so five feet. Five oh, ten. is it really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. The measuring tool is measuring in ten-foot increments. No shit. I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna <laughs> get in close and stealth. And I don't care I mean, if I roll. Is it pretty well? You know. <laughs> I am the gonna theater slowly... of the mind, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I will be slowly approaching, making a fair amount of noise, like making sure to like step on as many twigs and things as I can find. And you've got grumbling, the beer. Grumbling, yeah, got the beer? grumbling about stupid boys slamming their heads into stupid logs and dropping beer. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna be quiet about it. Sure, sure. That that's that for sure. Up to attention. try and give them a bit of cover as well. That that for sure uh, gets the attention of of the people here. It, God damn! How long does it take to go out and get two kegs of beer? And then you only brought back one damn keg of beer. What the hell? Don't go blaming me. It was that stupid little custodian. You know, we sent you with him to make sure something like this didn't happen so and that's where... why i got my beer back fine <sighs> all right well when soren gets back he's gonna be pissed as hell about this yeah I know. and that is where we're gonna end the stream this week so dun, dun, dun. narcissus i hope you keep in your mind and make good good notes about all the bullshit you're about to run on this this party <laughs>